yo yo welcome back everybody to your favorite 420 podcast as always your main host chino and our guest of the day is primo and, yeah. our, and our co-host as always jordan in the building yeah, yeah. so you know what it is a nice day today you know we got some crazy weather action here in chicago you know, we went from like cold ass weather to like hot as fuck. You know, almost that su- summer vibes. Mm-hmm. Crazy man, it was thirty one day, literally snow, and the mm-hmm. very next day we got like sixty degrees. I'm like, uh, God damn, it's a great way to get sick. <laughs> <laughs> I try to put away the winter jacket, but I don't feel safe doing it yet. Yeah, you right. Never do <laughs> in Chicago, bro. You never do. You always got to keep it handy. We got the four seasons in one day, man. So. I saw crazy. people busting out the shorts this weekend and everything, and I was like, crazy. Yeah, I was grilling last week. I thought it was beautiful, 50 degrees. Next day, there's snow on my grill. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. It's, it's, but is this, uh, what's, what you want to call it, this global, this global warming, global warming. Or, or climate changing, man? It got to be one of the, those two, but, you know, we, we ain't listening. <laughs> I don't even call it global warming anymore, bro. It's global boiling and shit. Right. That made a whole new phrase for it and everything. Yeah, I'm so out of the loop. I've never heard that. I know that um, just it, sounds even like more extreme. It is, and it's it's crazy because um apparently this uh winter was supposed to be called like El Nino, and it's like what I pretty much is it's like it's reverse where the southern states is like colder than you know the upper states, and and that's pretty crazy, you know. So I don't know, man. I don't know. It wasn't that crazy of like remember that blizzard back in like was it 2011, 20, 2012? 2010, yeah. Or 2010 like was that. it 2010 around I, there that I'm blizzard? Not, yeah, yeah, that shit was crazy. But, nah, uh, I, I know that like states that never got snow got snow this year, so that that was just crazy. See over there down like in Texas, like like those those people out there don't don't know don't know how to deal with the snow, bro. Like I was there like for a couple of years living out there, and you know, coming from Chicago to down there and like when it's barely like not even an inch of snow, but you got like people closing like stores, schools closed down, you know, people not driving right. And it's like, come on, my guy. Man, even... They skid over there. You see those videos and it's yeah. taxes barely any snow and then psh, yeah. everyone's sliding. It's not more, like that's crazy. different or whatever, but it, it goes crazy over there. It it's more like that black ice for them, and it's like they mm-hmm. don't have salt, and it's like, damn, y'all fucked, my guys. <laughs> no, nah, but you know what? Let, let's get back to to the cannabis topic of the day, and you know what, primo, like, tell us a little bit about yourself, my guy, and, and yourself in the industry of the of you know cannabis. All right. So, um, I've been in the cannabis industry. This is my fourth year. Okay. Um, I started three years. Um, about four years ago. Medical, um, out of Romeoville for Vera Life. You know, shout out to them. They helped me get my foot in the door. Um, but after that, I um, was at Ascend for two years. Um, they were really good to me. Mm-hmm. I almost did a third year with them, but um, at the end of that third year, um, there was a dispensary opening up near my house, so I decided to apply myself there. And I was actually a general manager there for a little bit. I had to open up a dispensary. Never thought, you know, I'd be like literally seeing a dispensary be built mm-hmm. and actually opening. I'm like, damn, so that was a really cool thing for me. Which was the uh, dispensary by your house? Which one was that? Uh, okay, so it was called Namaste out in Hodgkins. Mm. Um, so that was cool. I was there for a couple of months. At the end, the owner of me didn't see eye to eye, so mm-hmm. kind of stepped out of there. But uh, I'm back in the cannabis industry this year. Um, I'm working as a brand representative for 1937. Shout out. Okay, how's that so far? Like, like as the as the organization for the 1937 group. Uh, so they're amazing. Like, um, to the people that don't know, uh, 1937 is Latino-owned social equity cannabis company. Um, they do all three. What means is that they're able to grow, distribute, and they have dispensaries. Mm-hmm. They're the mm-hmm. only Latino cannabis-owned company in Illinois. And they're they're under the social equity flag, so that's really cool because the social equity was meant for like minorities, like us Latinos and our black brothers and sisters, you know. So it's cool to see that there's actually people trying mm-hmm. and trying to prosper. Because right now the Social Equity Act, um, there 
it's not really doing what they promised. You know, the people that, that they said that they were going to try to help and everything aren't being helped. Um, I've already seen cannabis companies go under. I just heard of a cannabis company going under recently where uh, they had probably started marketing and everything last June, last July, and they just went under. They literally let go of the whole manufacturing and fired everyone. And oh. as far as I know, they're just trying to sell the last of their product and mm. they're done, you know, because they couldn't stay afloat. Can you can you tell us what, what, what dispensary is that? That's so cool. it's not a dispensary, it's a brand. Oh, the brand. Um, yeah, from my understanding, um, it's going to be the company called Half Baked. Don't quote me on this just because I haven't confirmed it completely. Mm -hmm. But I've asked a couple of dispensaries around, a couple of people I know personally. And it just seems to be the chat that we're all hearing is that, yeah, they closed up shop. And I'm not sure where they're continuing to go. But right now, it sounds like they're done. And it's a brand that's based on Illinois? Yep. Okay. And you said it's called Half Baked? Yeah. It's Half Baked or Fully Baked. I can look it up right now. Yeah. No, I remember the Half Baked, too. I don't know if you remember, but Chino, when we went to a couple of the um the events. I remember seeing the stickers for them and everything. Really? Yeah. I'm trying to you remember could... that. Half... It had to be at the Chronic Labs, like, uh, episode. Maybe it's Fully like Baked. That. If, it's fully fully, baked? if it's Fully Baked, that's crazy, because they actually yeah, appeared. Fully, I think it's Fully Baked. Mm. That's crazy because they actually appeared on the show like not too long ago, like literally, like I said, like like under a month, like close to a month, I can say. I had uh, their 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 mark president marketing per like the people like the head the person that's in charge of their marketing come to the pod, and I I really thought that, that they were gonna blow like they're blowing up because I mean it's a brand new edible company and stuff. Holy shit! Yeah, I like so I was. I had so I just started brand ambassadoring, uh -huh. and, and um, I went out to a dispensary in Lexington, Lux to Leaf um, Dispensary, and they were like promoting them really big on their monitor. I'm like, oh, cool. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen them roll out yet, so I'm glad to have seen them roll out and have their brand out there. And when I was talking to them, I'm like, oh, cool. Are you guys affiliated with them? What's up? They're like, no, we just received a shipment, and word has it that you know, uh, sounds like they just let go of their employees. And I'm like. They haven't even been out for a year. Like, that's super crazy. That is crazy. Yeah, yeah. this hasn't been fully confirmed. Uh -huh. It's just what I've heard. That's, but... fucked up. that's crazy if, it, if that's true or not. Like, if, the, if the rumors are true, that's wow. I think that just shows, like, how Primo was saying earlier, like, how what the Social Equity Act is doing for people. Like, it's not really doing too much. Like, even right now, too, just before the... Uh... Just before, like, we got into the pod, too, I was checking my email, and I seen that they were doing round two for the loans. For the social equity act or whatever you know what i mean and it's a lot of like requirements and stuff like that but i feel like it's not going to the right people even the people that are getting accepted for loans it's not going to the right people but um the way that the illinois market works right now when it comes to like purchasing doesn't benefit people in the social equity and what i mean by that is that they're forced to make big purchases their first time purchasing stuff why oh. because you're always given a discount on your first purchase that's mm. it you know so what everyone does they'll blow 30 40 and bam you know you're stocked up whatever and mm. sure they'll give you deals down the line but your first deal when you first buy is always like your best deal and it sucks because sometimes these products are moving or selling and you overbought and now here comes three months and you haven't been able to sell enough product so you're not able to have fresh flour so a lot of these people are getting old flour. For, you know, there's some products that don't move. If you're not in a dab community or if your butt tenders don't know about dabs, those dabs can sit there and you'll have them expiring. And it's because, you know, the education's not there. And it sucks because nobody wants to buy a six-month or an eight-month-year-old dab because, like, the turps die out, all that. And, and the then you're stuck with that bad product. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, so, but let's, let's go back to, like, the social equity, though. Like... Who, 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 what's like the problem with that? Like, is it, is it the people, like the, the, is it the people who, who's making the social equity or is it the people in, within the community who has this social equity? So there's two issues, right? Um, I say there's two issues because there's still, even though when you apply for social equity, there's so many barriers to entry, right? The cost of, you know, 
creating product, having a place rented out, you know, whether you're a cannabis um, dispensary and like you're buying product, um, again, you're competing with these companies down the street that are MSOs that mm-hmm. will literally make these thousand dollar deals, million dollar deals. So they'll sell you the same exact product that you're selling at your social equity dispensary for 60 bucks. They'll be selling it for 30 bucks down the street. And like with the Illinois tax laws that we have, it's bullshit because that $30 is going to become $40 after tax. That $60 is going to become $81 after tax. Mm -hmm. So of course I'm going to go buy the $30 dabs. It's the same product, you know, boo-hoo to the social equity, you know, but it's just that's shitty, in my opinion. I and like, then, uh-huh. Uh-huh. I, no, I, sorry to cut you off, my guy, but uh, I feel like that that that's true though, because like I feel like although like if it goes to, to the social equity people or not, like even like from mom and pops, you know, company brand, how, how like how you just said, how are they gonna compete with like MSOs, you know, that be like lowering the price just to get that sell? You feel me? <laughs> But then again, like if you compare the MSOs to like, let's say, for example, a small brand, you know, w- which one would you prefer more? It, uh, let's not let's not focus on the price, though. I, I would love to give back to my community. I, I would like to be paying five dollars more, ten dollars more to go to the social equity. But, you know, we can go into Logan Square. We see we have one big MSO right there and then we have Gre- um grasshopper right there and that's mm-hmm. a black owned um disp- um dispensary mm-hmm. and the price is never gonna look the same you know because the sand i'm sorry the mso is making like this big you know multi-state deals interstate deals whatever it is and the price is always you know beating down the street so kind of sucks is there is there like do you think there's ever gonna be uh a time where you know, social equity could be at the same level as an S- MSO. Like, is there like, is there ever going to be a possible chance? Because like, l- let's say for another state, uh, you know, down that's next to us, which is Michigan, you know, because I've, I've been to Michigan a couple of times. And again, the price is very low compared to here. So, so Michigan, in my opinion, has a good plan, but not a very like money you know, like gonna gain a lot of revenue plan. Mm-hmm. So what I like about them is their barrier to entry is almost none. You know, mm-hmm. anyone could, you know, um pretty much start to grow if they apply for the license. License is not crazy, it's very affordable. And then with that, they're able to distribute legally. And there's a lot of dispensaries that you see picking up these products and everything. The cost out there to do everything is a lot less because they're being taxed a lot less than Illinois. Illinois has outrageous taxes, whether it's, you know, distribution, whether, you know, whatever it is with cannabis in Illinois, there's a heavy tax on everything. So it's just super annoying. And Illinois has these rules where, Mm -hmm. you know, you need certain amount of space to grow or you need, you know, these certain criteria to be able to do this stuff. And this criteria cancels out like 98% of the people. It sucks, you know? And they want to say that they're helping out people, but like, if you're broke, you know, you're never going to ever have a chance. You know, we, we have people in our communities that we've known to grow flour. We've seen them transform flour into usable products. And, you know, we're not going to just talk about like, oh, look, you know, they made dope ass dabs. I know people that make tinctures. I know people that make balms, you know, those are more holistic properties to cannabis but they're never going to be able to go under the social equity and get that. Their best opportunity is hope that an MSO decides to pick up their their product mm-hmm. and rebrand it and say that, hey, look, we have this black partner or brown partner. But at the end of the day, I don't ever hear them making too much money off of it. So that kind of sucks. If you were, let's say, if, they, if you were in that position, what would you do? Uh, one thing I would do is I like Michigan's plan where, you know, you have a lower barrier to entry. Um, I think, you know, it should be more accessible to a lot of us. One thing that we see is it isn't heavily regulated. So recently they had a lot of recalls on their product because they're getting mold. They're getting other people doing private testing and causing these recalls. You know, uh, I like that. You know, no, you don't ever have to 
a majority of the point, you wouldn't have to worry about mold. You know, I like to believe that. While Illinois did have a mold scandal like two years ago that was never addressed, you know, we're starting to see, you know, recalls when products go bad. So that's good. Okay. Jordan, you guys um, see right now, my guy? No, I mean, just as you said, too, like, I don't, like, as far as the Illinois, like, um, product and stuff too i never really had you know problems with you know dispensaries having mold you know or like dabs going dark the only thing i will say though is like if i buy carts and i leave it outside for like maybe like a week or two it does start to like you know get a discoloration start going a little bit darker you know what i mean yeah that's oxidation that could do something with the temperature of the batteries mm -hmm. um one thing i always told customers you never want an inhale activated battery and the reason for that is that as soon as it pulls, it's giving you a high voltage so you can get that instant smoke. Right. You know, um, obviously temperature controlled batteries are the way to go because you start at lower temps, get those clouds, preheat, you know, all that stuff. For sure. And then if, if um, what what would be one thing that you would want to change in the community here? Uh, what thing I would like to do is uh, give people possibly the opportunity to create product, have it tested, you know, as long as there's an Illinois lab report that the state can verify mm -hmm. to be able to sell THC products if they have their own um, vendor, a uh, private cannabis vendor, you know, we could say the application would be. And it'd be cool because they they could legally license their product and sell it at, you know, if you, last year you saw my little farmer's market kind of cannabis vibe. You know, we can have legal versions of that because there's in Michigan, I, I've been out there where they have these, you know, outdoor festivals where there's 80 cannabis vendors, they make carts, they make dabs, they have their events. Their chocolates are better than some of the chocolates in the dispensary, you know? And they're, it's a real community, but that's the problem with Michigan. They allow this community to happen and it hurts from their, um, their um dispensary community so a lot of people can grow out there and everything and that's where of course they're not making much money they're lucky enough to have a lot of out-of-state money coming to them but what would happen if illinois followed them they would lose a lot of their out-of-state money and cannabis would be considered you know maybe like a wasteful product over there i would imagine like in right. michigan yeah probably you know, because but... right now we're all going to Michigan because it's cheaper than Illinois. Illinois yeah. Illinois gets out of state money, but Michigan's only two hours away from Illinois. For people that have the opportunity, they should always go to Michigan. I mean, I'm not saying you should be crossing borders, but that's better than <laughs> Don't condone it. Don't condone <laughs> yeah. it. No. Jordan knows. Jordan knows. I, I've taken already like three trips, man. Um, I, I just tell everybody, I mean, don't. Just be on the lookout if you go, you know, mm -hmm. don't smoke and drive, of course. Um, but again, I mean, cops really like my trips to Michigan from home to Michigan. It's very smooth. Like, I barely see any cops, you know, it's, I'm very just like aware in Indiana, of course. But like, yeah. Yeah. no one wants to get stopped in Indiana. That's yeah. Last thing. yeah. So but other than that, I mean, everything seems to be smooth now, but. Again, I under I, I understand that and I do agree on that, uh, my guy. Like I, I would personally rather go take the two hour trip and you know so what spend a good three hundred, four hundred dollar, you know, and, and bring a shit ton with me than what I could be spending just like on an eighth for a hundred dollar, you know, or mm -hmm. a gram of wax for a hundred dollars, you know? It's so crazy because, you know, again, I can get an eighth of dabs out of Michigan and out the door I'll pay like forty bucks a gram in here and again this is me looking you know bargain deals and everything mm -hmm. a gram here maybe 30 bucks to 40 bucks you know what's a gram to an eighth and that's that i don't i don't say i don't shop in the Illinois markets i do i have a lot of friends in the industry i mm -hmm. like to support their companies you know and i want to talk about Illinois products because this is my state i should be happy about what we have here but of course you know of course i dabble in michigan too because hey you know the kind of stuff out here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I tell you. Back, back to what you were saying, Primo, about like the barriers in Illinois too. Um, I just kind of had a similar experience to what you said earlier, just because like I know a lot of like smaller companies or like how you know saying like mom and mom and pop companies that like 
have really good product. They um, are on it with marketing, you know what I mean? They're on it with everything else. Um, but they're just like stuck at a certain point because they don't have the funds to actually get licensed and stuff like that. Like it's, I just feel like it's a very, I wouldn't say sad thing, but it's something that I feel like should, is kind of overlooked, you know what I mean? Because like I've had, I've had dads from companies that aren't really like registered or anything like that, and you know, because of the whole barrier situation, but like they have even better stuff than dispensaries. And I just like wish there was a way for their, for their stuff to get recognized statewide. You know what I mean? I agree with you because, you know, we got homies down in Logan, you know, shout out to the dude with the Eagle sticker. He knows who he is. Like he makes dope ass dabs. I've seen his uh -huh. product. I know homies that talk about his product, you know, like I know he's putting out product that's better than what's in the dispo. Sorry. Feel like, no, you like, good, you good, you good, you good, good, like to get the, the, um, you, you, you know, making the me content wanna... for the, you know, we like, we like to get the content for the pod. You know what I mean? You, you you make me want to take the dab from you, Primo. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty cool piece, too, it, it, for the puff I've never seen yeah. something like that. Oh, yeah. Man, I buy from Z Vapor, which is an Illinois company, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're really big on Puffco products and everything. This is my second glass from them. I've enjoyed them a lot. Uh -huh. I went up to their store up north. It looks really dope. It's literally glass down and everything. So, oh, they actually have a store, too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, I was... Okay. I was surprised because, you know, obviously I was looking at Puffco stuff online. Mm -hmm. I'm part of a bunch of Puffco communities, so they popped up a lot. So, turns out they're from Illinois, and I'm like, oh, that's so dope. So even better for me to support them. And uh, just a quick question. Like, how much was, like, your the top piece, like, the... That one, 80 bucks. Oh, that's not that's that not bad. bad. That's not no, that bad. I, I know people... About 100. I know, yeah, no, people, yeah. People would be taxing on because of the design of how the glass is and stuff, mm -hmm. but that's not that bad for eighty bucks. That's decent price. That's not that bad. Yeah, it's probably not American blown or whatever. I don't call me out that because I haven't done my research on smoke glass, but um, as long as it hits, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, it looks, it looks like it's got like two or three perks on there too. I really like that. Yeah, it has two. Nice, yeah, nice. Yeah, that's that's what's up. So are you are you like a, a happy person within the community here? Like because I like I, I what I really want to know is how people really think of, of, of the kind of cannabis community here. Like like your honest opinions on it, you know, like so I'll tell you my both perspective, right? Because I've been I've been to underground shows and I've been to industry shows, right? So the underground community is cool because they pop out. They show love to each other. So if homies throw an event, they'll go. If X other homies go to an event, they'll go. You know, you see that all the time. And, you know, a lot of your friends that are in art communities or in different communities show love because cannabis touches everybody. So you're seeing a lot of your friends in this. So mm -hmm. if you're really involved in the community, you'll see those homies popping out. And, like, when it comes to cannabis industry events, it sucks because all you see, I, I, don't, I don't think it sucks. But I think it's just that you only see people in the cannabis industry. And what I'm trying to really do as myself is bring, you know, the community people and the industry people together because, and we all love cannabis. We all want to party. And that's pretty, pretty much what Primo is trying to be. And, you know, I see it in the cannabis industry where we go to these events and they were supposed to be networking events, but it just came, became, you know, your homies smoking, you know, just smoking with your homies from the industry, which is cool, you know. But when I first thought of industry, um, networking, at least for cannabis, it was for me to meet like, hey, let me meet the marketing manager of this company or, hey, um, which I did meet the CEO from 1937 at one of these networking companies. But it was more of the first ones and the later ones just kind of became more parties kind of. I I do see I uh, I see that uh because I have kind of we've been to events from like the very start and then uh we just haven't gone to recent ones but like just based on social media and stuff like it's more now like a consumption you know like just to have an environment where you you're okay to smoke you feel me like it like a space safe space to smoke where like how you mentioned before is like of course you wanted to network meet people who are already in the industry for so you can get you know your feet in in it as well because. That's pretty much, I feel like, how you you could get into it, you know, by, by meeting people, you know, and getting connections. But uh, I just feel like 
just personally by just by me looking and just observing the community i feel like it's just heading in a different direction than what we really want it to be here you know one thing that me as a personal cannabis smoker learned you know when you were smoking if there's people around you you always share the blunt whatever mm-hmm. you know right, right. You because we're all here to get high right yeah but you know that's something that i feel like has been lost in the cannabis industry you know uh you know it's just us smoking we're just that you know you know you don't share with the person next to you blah blah, blah. um at the first couple of networking events that's one thing i did you know if i talked to you or you know we vibed at one point the next time i saw you i brought you out a joint and you know there's a couple people I went, we went out and we literally oh we see them pack them a joint 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 mm-hmm. and handed them out and it's cool because you know some of these people i work with them or i've worked you know at some point with them and they're like you know i always remember that you handed me a joint it was super tasty because i don't really like good weed <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's cool because that's something we can remember mm-hmm. um 1937 that company that when they had just started up here um i had met them at the butt tenders awards and i then saw them at the networking event and of course you know i'm like oh cool second time i see you like, here's a joint i just rolled it up here mm-hmm. smoke this shit you know and he took uh it's not too long ago that i talked to him about this you know but he's like you know i always remember that you gave me that joint i'm like yo man this is what the weed in community should be about you know you know showing love to people that you know because we're all here to get high you know and i'm like damn bro it's a, you meet a hundred people you know you're a, you own this cannabis company but to you for you to say that you remember that you know yeah you know, i i took it personally i thought that was dope you know uh, yeah yes because like you said there's a shit ton of people out here you know and and it, it just shows that how still you know as long as as like not a lot of people still show it but you know it's, it's still good to know that there's still some out there left that like the real you know like people who who love the plant you know and love the community for what it really is you know i feel like it's more of a business side of it here which kind of sucks in my point of view because like how you were mentioning it's not like like we can just pass pass the joint or the blunt to the next person because what i see is like it's just small little circles within Mm -hmm. the 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 event like it'd be like a small group here but then this small group wouldn't be talking to the other group that's on the other side of the room you feel me which to me is like it doesn't make sense because it it's the industry where we all need to come together and, and just be chill, you know? That that's what it <laughs> it's it's for, you know? No, nah, even then too, like sometimes at those events, like if I try to like branch out into and like go into another circle or like just go into random like random people and you know people look at you trying to buy, yeah, exactly. Yes, yes they do. Yeah, they'd, they'd be like, like how you get in our group? Like what the fuck? Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like it's like it's the whole purpose. You're supposed to network and you know, meet other people, but like I just I just feel like the community has to get away from that where it's like you look you're like ostracized for trying to you know trying to branch out and just you know meet new people where as you know like he was saying before every everything just in small groups and no one's really talking to each other they just stay by their friends and stuff like that and you know that sucks because you know there is so many cool people out there and it kind of sucks that it kind of became like a community of who you know and like, oh, yeah. you know, them so you can know them. Me, as a brand ambassador, I'm really, you know, I, I'm meeting more brand ambassadors. So I know when I go to these next events, I'll be like, oh, hey, which is cool because, you know, this is one reason I took this position is because I knew I'd be with more brand ambassadors. I'd be able to do more networking at these events because I would already have, you know, a point of topic to, you know, have with them. So, but you know, I, I see it. I was at this VR event on the north side, and this guy came up to me, and he was like, um, hi, I'm so-and-so. And I'm like, at first, I'm like, why is this guy talking to me? I don't know this guy. But I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm at a networking event, you know? Yeah. Let's talk cannabis. We both know cannabis. We can talk to each other. <laughs> so I talked to him. He was telling me that he makes websites and everything. And I'm like, oh, that's super dope. And, you know, I've seen him put some cannabis websites up. Um, I'm hoping to work with him so I could make my cannabis website um, because I tried doing that. Uh, clearly, it's not done. So, 
Um, but it's cool. That's what networking should be. Meeting other people that who knows, you might be able to work with in the future, collab with. No, oh, hell yeah. And especially here with us, I mean, we always love to, you know, keep in contact with the people we, we made or even the people who appear on our show, you know, just continue working with them. Um, because we our goal is as well, you know, is, is to get as as to the top as pos- as much as we can, you know, get recognition, but as well, you know, bring <laughs> products out or, or work with companies, you know, to provide for the people who, you know, enjoy it. Um, but you know, another question is, um, what, 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 what is your preferred way? Is it more of a dab? You're more of a dab guy or a flower guy? I think right now I, I'm liking dabs a lot just because, um, where I'm at right now, I can smoke dabs inside. No problem. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I just smoked flowers the other day and, and you know, my sister's gonna be super mad because I told her, yeah, no matter what, I smoke dabs more than anything. I smoked flowers the other day and I was like. Damn, dude, this fucking blunt's hitting. I'm like, and I know people don't like blunts. I still love blunts. I think they're fucking same. Weird. Same. <laughs> yeah, you go into the fucking weed industries, you bring a blunt. Oh no, I'm not smoking. Weed. You're smoking. And I get that. <laughs> you don't want tobacco. You don't want that. I get it. You know, but it'd be hitting something fuck? different. It'd be hitting different though. It yeah. Does it different. yeah, yeah, it's twenty minute blunt. You can actually feel the weed smack you, you know, mm-hmm. and you just let that shit build up. A joint, it's just burning itself through, in my opinion. No, yeah, I feel you. But like, I feel like for me, when I smoke a, a blunt, I feel like I'm just taking myself to the good old days. You feel me? Like when when I'm birdie started to, you know, roll and smoke for the first time, you know, just getting them throwbacks in. You know, yeah. that... me, me learning how to roll, I always remember. Uh, the, I tried rolling a uh, blunt because my friend gave me the weed. And I'm like, I can't, I can't do it. I licked the whole blunt, everything is literally super wet. I'm like, I can't do this. And they're like, what the fuck are you doing? So they're like, all right, here's a box of blunts. You're going to learn how to roll today. And, you know, like four blunts in, I learned how to roll. You know, I'm like, all right, cool. And then my blunts just got better and better. I curl them now, so. That's what's up, my guy. You should become a, a professional roller then. <laughs> oh, my sir. I- yeah. I key on all to my own horn. I think I could do it. I saw Rod do their professional rolling stuff. I'm like, yeah, what's stopping me from being a professional blunt person? Because my blunts be heavy. For sure. Oh, definitely. Yeah. No, especially and even with joints too. Like I know it's a little bit harder to roll too. I know a lot of people like say that, but even in the group setting too, I feel like joint is more of a personal thing. Whereas like you can't really pass it around as easily as like a blunter. Especially if you're outside too, that that makes like way big of a difference as well. Yeah, I passed the joint around the other day. It went around probably two times around the circle. And I'm like, oh, because it's a joint. A blunt would have gone at least four or five times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get a backwood at that point. <laughs> oh yeah, that that was my next but... question. Next question. What? Is, how do you feel about those? So I don't hate backwoods. I'm never the one to go pick them up and be like, yo, let's smoke a backwood. I'm right. a Garcia Vega guy. Same, you know, same. A gram, gram and a half in that, but you know, I'm good. But like, uh, a backwood. If someone wants to roll up a whole eighth, or you know, for some reason you want to throw down like a whole eighth, a whole quad, or whatever. All right, cool. Fuck it, I'll do a backwood. But you gotta roll the backwood good, so it's, it's not harsh. If yeah, you're rolling the whole backwood for just a gram or whatever, that's a fucking waste. Don't be fucking doing that shit. <laughs> exactly. <And he> says- <laughs> I always say like two we, and a half we, grams. It's like we, the, we the, know the someone who, who would put a gram on a back. <laughs> <laughs> minimum an eighth. That's why I've always been told that's my minimum eighth, you know? <laughs> that's funny. Think about the exact same person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro. That's funny. No, but I mean, are you, are you a, a Stiva Indica or hybrid guy? So I'm an Indica guy. But I have a lot of love for sativa. I feel like so many people always be like, I hate sativa. I bash sativa. No. Like, right now I was smoking on this lemon tree. And I love it because it reminds me of sour diesel. Super stony head high. You know, um, feeling your eyes, feeling your face. Like, super, like, blissful and everything. It's just super stony. And I enjoy it a lot. Mm-hmm. But it's a sativa. Um, and sour diesel is one of my favorite ones from back in the day. Smoked like gas. Always got you like super lifted, loved it. But right now I smoke indica. Like I like the body high, 
And I feel like nine out of ten times, indicas are doing me right. While if I smoke the wrong sativa, you might have a little bit of anxiety. So like, who wants that? Right, right. You're not trying to fuck up your high. Yeah, I get you. Even uh, with indicas too. Sorry to cut you off, Chino. No, do you feel good. like you could uh like you could smoke it all throughout the day and it won't affect your day? Because like that's something that I experience with indicas. Is like sometimes if it's too strong, I'll just be like, damn, I don't want to do shit for the rest of the day. So I've had those indicas where if I wake and bake with them, I go right mm. back to sleep. Right. So I, I'll try to stay away from some of those, but like I know which ones those are. But like a regular indica, I can smoke like a regular or you know, whatever type of strain of indica, you know, mm-hmm. during the mornings, because I feel like my mind's always on a hundred. I'm always thinking too many things. I don't I'm not diagnosed for ADHD or ADD, but if someone told me right now it's like, hey, you probably have it, I'm like, okay, I can leave it. <laughs> hey, only you would know yourself, my guy. <laughs> oh, that's what's up, bro. But I mean, I know that when when we went to your event back in March, right? Was it March? Or was it March? yeah? Right, was it March, April? That weather was crazy that day. It was. I was. I had. I came in late. I I remember Jordan was there. We got there first with our already got another guy of ours. Um. But I just I'm, remember all the vendors, man. There was like crazy ass vendors. I remember there was like an infused um food vendor. Yeah. There's... Yeah. That's... Oh, that's um Dan Cuisine. Yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. Deep, yeah then yeah, they had the art vendors and there's a whole bunch of cannabis related vendors too. It was really busting, it was popping. Oh, yeah. yeah, so my goal this year is um right now I was shooting for an event in April. I might push that back in May. But at least from May all the way up until October to throw a couple of cannabis events. Right now, I'm working on doing like a business proposal um, so I can give it to brands and actually have real funding. Because all these events I've thrown, fully out of pocket. And like a lot of these vendors, since they're art community people, like I personally know artists, they don't make a lot of money. Like, and I always feel bad for them because, you know, there are people that, care there are people that care about the community there are people that you know try to look out for each other so i wasn't in the business of being like yo everyone give me like 50 or 100 dollars for a table mm-hmm. which i've been hearing some crazy stories where people pay like 200 500 for a table Damn. i'm like what the fuck i'm missing out on money you know but i'm like no at the very most i think i charge 20 dollars if that and you know i was able to get a dj you know shout out to dj lugo um i was able to um we had the food vendors there they're great guys obviously and you know everyone came out and busted out the artists that were doing the murals on the wall um since my dad's a part of the art community and the art group in logan square on renegades of funk all those artists are people that are either part of the group or they work with the group or a part of the art community itself and they all did it whether it was their out of pocket um cans or sometimes we get cans donated. Um that's how that was able to get funded over there. So again, we try our best to keep our costs low by having, you know, a lot of our friends do a bunch of shit for us. No, uh, yeah, and I feel like that's a good way to start too. Cause then you guys all all of you guys, whoever was, you know, started can can, you know, get together, see what, what worked, what didn't work, how can you guys improve and then build up from there, you know, which is pretty dope. You know, and and to just have the day ones, you know, with you at all times, bro. Because that that because again, like stuff like people like that, or even within the community of, that you're in, that could be helping yourself out, but then helping others out, you know. Oh yeah, like one DJ that like we personally work with that has been at a multiple of our events, uh, DJ Water Um Oh yeah, hell yeah. You'll see him at the hairpin and everything. He's a dope ass dude. Like, um, he has great music and everything. And a lot of the time, you know, I was able just to, you know, he helped me out by me just helping either paying a majority of him, like through cannabis or whatever, or, you know, keeping his costs really low. So I appreciate that guy like so much, you know, for the future events that I have planned out. I I always tell people I have a DJ ready because if I'm going to get money, I plan to offer it to him first because he was there when I didn't have shit, you know? Mm-hmm. And you know, I have my other DJs and cool. I if I don't need to work with them, I will work with other people because again, you know, you're my friend or whatever, you want to be a part of this. Of course, you know, I don't mind, you know, bringing more people into this community, but of course I want to remember who was there for me first. 
yeah, uh, yeah. Sure. Totally Shout out DJ know. Water Body though. He got some fire music too. He's yeah. um he's been at Don't a lot of events me. too. You know what I mean? And uh, he's all he is always for the community as well. Whether it's like cannabis community, vintage community. You know, what I mean, whatever he does, especially in the events, he just brings he just brings a vibe that is like unmatchable. You know what I mean? He's so dope, bro. Like <clears throat> if you talk Zen, this man is Zen. Like yep, he comes yep. up to you and you know nothing but good vibes. Mm-hmm. And you know, you just feel like in a better atmosphere, you feel uplifted when he's around. And right. that's me just how I personally feel. Definitely. Yeah. What were you gonna ask? You know, my bad. Um, so let, let's let's get uh, into like the, the more of, of your your events, Primo. Like I know okay. uh the first one that we went to, um, it was a mix of like cannabis and of course art with but in the more specific of art is the graffiti. So what is your background with that? Okay. So my background, at least with graffiti, um, sorry. Uh, my background, at least with graffiti, um, stems a lot with my dad. Uh, my dad, growing up, he was a tagger. You know, he used to be part of different groups, um, putting up different murals. So growing up, he's always telling us, oh, you know, woo, woo, I did this and that. When I was like in middle school, mm-hmm. um, we went into the garage. And he showed me his tag in the inside of the garage with a spray can. And he's like, we're going to do your tag. And um, at that time, I was going by Kid Shy, because, you know, Kid from the Shy. Mm-hmm. And um, he showed me how to tag that name up. So that was pretty cool. I was, like, in third, fourth grade in the garage. Um, that's where I designed my little um, city logo that I always like to throw up anywhere. And that, that stuck with me, you know? That was cool. That was the first time I got the tag. Um I got more into doing like stickers, you know, like middle school, high school. I fucked around a lot with the decals, you know. I thought they were really cool paint markers and everything. But um, I didn't really do a lot of like graffiti outside of like stickers and books until maybe like recently, once I got to try um like um practice walls with them and his um the cannabis group. I mean his um art group. Oh, okay. And then you say your your dad is like part of the Logan Square community art group. Yeah, yeah, he's he's part of Renegades of Funk. So, um, every I think it's August, every right? it's in August that we have he does the battle for the eagle, and that's where he brings the four elements of hip hop, and it, and man, he's gonna be mad if I don't get this right. But it's um break dancing, graffiti, mm-hmm. um, what else? I'm seeing. Uh, I'm seeing like rap, and the other one is. DJ, right? So they have all of those guys, and um, so that's really cool because it's a free event. It's one the only free event in Chicago, Illinois, that does all four and all that. So, and they've been doing it for like the last forty ish years, I think. I know, I think it's twenty five years. I think they just came out with the shirt and said twenty five or thirty years. He's gonna be mad that I don't know this, but <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You high, no? <laughs> yeah, we'll claim that I'm high. Yeah, I'll give it to that. Um, but no, nah, he's really cool. A lot of the people that I've met, um, from his group, no groups from like, um, those big tag walls you'll see, you know, like J4F. If you ever see that tagged anywhere just for fun, mm-hmm. sometimes they have artists do um walls on their commission walls and everything. And then you got like Wasp, you got um, who else? Another big name, I don't know, X Men, X Men's cool one, um, ABC. You know, all those groups, you know, I'm um, doing walls for them. So they know everyone in the community, even if they are not a part of the Renegades of Funk, they usually touch with everyone. And sometimes um, they get to work with a lot of muralists. Uh, so like me personally, a muralist that I know, it would be like Kitty Soros, you know? She's not, as far as I know, a part of like a certain group or anything, but she knows them and she's able to put up um, on walls because of them, so. I'm, I'm sure she does more outside of them, but yeah. Yeah, no, I've seen K Source's stuff too. I really like her um style, you know what I mean? It's definitely like as soon as you look at it, you can tell it's her, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's so cool. I love the little dope out girl. I love the little mushrooms. I love the cats. <laughs> so I definitely like seeing her pieces. Um, I think there's one right there at the Congress Theater. And oh, yeah. I think I was on 18th Street in Pilsen. I think there's one up there as well. Are you familiar with um bird milk too? 
yeah, yeah, like maybe a younger stuff. guy too. I really like his stuff too. I've um, I've seen a lot of his stuff in Pilsen too. I, I think he's on that same uh, Congress um theater too. I'm not sure though. I know they so just redid it though. I don't know if you saw my recent trip on um down on on Pilsen where all the graffiti's at, but a lot of the graffiti, at least right now in the city, is getting tagged over yeah, because yeah. they're saying it's causing gentrification. You know, it's causing what again? But, uh, it's gentrification. the uh, gentrification. Oh, but it's and hard. <laughs> it's hard, right, bro? Like it's like, hard, and it's for the community. It just it, so happens to be that more people outside the community like it too. But mm-hmm. the people that are causing gentrification are the ones that are building the fucking buildings. It's the ones right. that are buying houses. It's not the people painting on the fucking walls. No, I yeah. Go ahead, you know. so, sorry, no. Uh, finish your your what you were gonna say, my guy, because I was gonna. No, no, a I'll... different thing. I was just going to say that, like, I feel the reason that people think that way is because sometimes, like, people that own, you know, the gentrified buildings and stuff, they'll use graffiti to kind of, like, beautify the place when it doesn't look as good, you know what I mean? Like, if it's, like, a rundown building, they'll try to put graffiti to make it look nicer, and people view that as, like, oh, the graffiti artists are bringing in the the um, gentrification. Yeah, no, man, I think, you know... If a company wants to spend money on a community artist and display their art, I don't think that's wrong. You know, should these artists not get paid for the work that they do? Right. You know, I think that's every artist's dream is to, you know, eventually get paid for the work that they do. So I don't ever hold that against them. You know, we have like JC Rivera, you know, he's international. And I know a lot of people might say that, like, oh, you know, sometimes he thinks he's too big, but, you know, you're touching around the world. You don't always have time for home, and I get that. But there's people out here, like, man, who can I say that's out here? I don't know, but we'll just say, you know, there's artists out here that, oh, here, uh, Ali Six. Ali Six is a dope um, um, graffiti artist because you see his um, pieces everywhere. You see it in Pilsen, you see it in Logan, you see it in Wicker. Um, when he throws art shows, um, I remember paying for his art shows if we did, it was probably maybe like five, some bucks, but um, I want to say they were free. And, you know, like, he's always down. I see him, like, he's there. He's talkable. I took a picture with dude, you know, like, he's a cool dude. And, you know, he's he's for the community. He's for here. And, yeah, he's probably getting paid, I, I would hope, decent for, like, the big-ass pieces that he does. But, you know, I love seeing his pieces throughout my city. I don't ever want that to stop. Uh, it's just sorry, but it's because I'm not really in, into like the art community. But are we talking about the dude that m- makes that big br- bear or golden no, bear? No, no, no. So, um, JC Rivera, that's uh-huh. the punching bear dude, right? Okay. And, um, he's the what's it called, Mister International? You know, you see his pieces all, all over the place now. But the the Ali Six guy that I'm referring to is the raccoon guy. He has oh. raccoon little white gloves. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you're I've talking about. I've seen that now. one for sure. Yeah, I've seen, I, I'm, I've seen like, mostly the raccoon face more than, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Now. Yeah, so like um, one of my favorite pieces that I don't think is up anymore, Um, he was uh, had his um raccoon dressed up as like Yoda and he had like a green lightsaber, but he also had Charizard and a, like three other cool characters behind him. Oh, and okay. has a lot of dope ass wall. Um, I know right now in... Logan Wick Logan on Milwaukee in front of the Congress Theater. He has one and it's like a Mexican like um thing, but he's like holding a burrito and everything. So I think that's pretty fucking dope. <laughs> that's what's um, up. Pieces. So so actually uh going to my question I was gonna ask earlier is um just like how how you know graffiti artists get, still get these uh conflicts with you know for how we you guys were saying the uh gentrific is it gen- gen- yeah 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 so like I guess going back to like back in the days and all and I'm I'm not sure even until now but like why why is it that uh, it they get a lot of like bad like um how do I say like a bad view of graffiti like why why from like the start and I'm not sure if it's still now that people are are like offended or are against the graffiti and I, because I know now we consider it as art, you know, but like back then, like why, you know? So I think one thing is we graffiti is still graffiti, and what I what I mean by that is that when people like Ali Six, J C Rivera, 
they're known as muralists, right? Yeah. They're street artists. While like people that throw up for like J4F, ABC, they're more graffiti artists because they're throwing up with cans for the most part, you know, that that's their pieces. They don't get planned out spots. They don't get sometimes, you know, legal spots, you know? Mm-hmm. Right, right. So, so that that's one of the big differences. So sometimes a conflict within the community is that these muralists, you know, they're not really, a, you know, street artists. They're um, street muralists. And sometimes, you know, there's always a conflict. Like, do they hold themselves higher than each, you know, whatever? I think at that time, at that point, it's just a legal thing. But I'm just talking from my outside perspective, you know. But you know, it's from what I hear from different artists. That's it. Um, but um, I don't know. I still see that graffiti itself is that. You know, as a Chicagoan, I love driving down 290, 90 or whatever, and I love seeing the graffiti on the walls. I love seeing, you know, people tagging, you know, the tunnels, the lakeshore and everything. I think that's fucking dope. But downtown doesn't like that shit. Obviously, they're always cleaning it up every... The city doesn't like that because anytime you tag, like, a name or anything, it's graffiti. No matter how cool right. you dress up for letters or anything, that's graffiti. They'll never keep that up. Um... But, you know, obviously the muralists, they get permission, which, you know, you should get permission. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not a bad thing to put up their pieces. I feel like no. they should just be... Sorry, what were you going to say? No, that's it. No, I just feel like, like, back to what you were saying, too, I feel like there should just be a little bit more education on the difference between, like, what a muralist is and what a graf- like what graffiti, arti- graffiti artist is, you know what I mean? Because, yeah. like, like you were saying, too, graffiti, like... I feel like, you know, it's always like they're just like doing it on spots where they're not allowed or, you know, just doing it on places where if they were get, if they were to get caught, they got they would get in trouble. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think that's that's where the bad rep comes from. But like, I just think education on the difference would kind of help a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a cool thing about my dad's group. Um, the Renegades of Funk, they'll have practice walls for people to come throw tags up, you know? So, like, mm-hmm. the people that want to tag their name legally, you know, you can go to them, and when they have the availability, they'll they'll get you in, and you'll be able to throw up your wall. And it's not just for taggers, it's also for muralists. So, like, I've seen a lot of muralists when Project Logan was right there by Liberty Bank. Now it got thrown down. Um, That was a rotating wall, like, every month, every two weeks or whatever. You know, people were saved to do their walls there. And that was really dope. And I think it's cool to have safe spaces like that. I know, like, when they throw their events on um, in August for Battle for the Eagle, a uh, cool thing that they do is they saran wrap the, the trees, and they'll have people tag on the saran wrap. And that's like, oh, cool, it's graffiti without hurting anybody. No, yeah, definitely. I feel, I feel like there should be more, um, like, there should be more opportunities for that. You know what I mean? Because I feel like that, that, that's what would change the narrative on it. Cause like, I know people see it on like the subways and like you're saying the tunnels and stuff like that. And some people that aren't adept to it are never really like stayed in the city for real. They, they'll just automatically write it off. It's like, Oh, it's something bad. Uh, To me personally, graffiti, graffiti itself, you know, ties them with cannabis, you know, it's us doing stuff that, isn't look you know it's frowned upon or whatever it's illegal activities and that's the truth you know cannabis for a long time and still sort of is illegal to sell you know if you're not doing it in dispensary it's illegal right yeah. and you know graffiti throwing it up on the streets you know whatever it's legal you know it just so happens you know a lot of it crosses together and i don't know maybe it's just people you know liking to do bad stuff but you know <laughs> i like it uh, yeah, we we all can't be saints twenty four seven. But is is there any like plans within the community of like graffiti for you guys though for you for yourself more mostly though? Me personally, um, right now I've been trying to talk with my dad's group, um, because I would like to throw up a wall, um, a wall for nineteen thirty seven, uh, just because again it's a Latino company, I had a lot of you know respect for them before i started working for them now that i'm working for them i want to continue my respect for them and that's something i had talked to them in the past it's something that i would like to hopefully fulfill you know soon Mm -hmm. and um that with that wall i would like to do like barbecue kickback with um you know hopefully cannabis and everything there and then have other um 
graffiti artists or muralists to some other walls in said location. So is is like a goal for you, like to to have something where you know graffiti and art and cannabis together? Like, is that like your main goal for yourself, or? or so that... I would say it's my main goal. Um, I think cannabis side is my main goal for the most part. Okay. Um, like this year, one thing I'm really doing is these five events that I'm throwing. They're literally going to be cannabis centric, meaning there's not going to be vendors there. Um, there's not going to be like you know, um, maybe muralists uh, or um, graffiti artists throwing pieces. They're going to be at like these venues. They're going to be at said locations. They'll have themes to them. There might be art there um, if it fits the theme to it. But it's not necessarily going to be like something that's always going to be there. Um, what I'm going to do is this year is I'm trying to separate my artist friends or whatever. Not that I want to separate them from cannabis, but I, what I would like to do is uh, every two weeks, I believe, I'm doing like an art uh, vendors market in, in like in a parking lot. So, you know, all my artists and will probably be as low budgeting that I can be so they can try to make as much money as possible. Um, for them to, you know, come together, I'll set it up and, you know, have a nice little event so they can sell their art, go to the community, you know, because mm -hmm. obviously we have like um, vendors markets, um, farmers markets, but, you know, you don't always get the chance. Sometimes the cost to even participate in one of them are expensive. And then, you know, if you only get to sell one thing that day, you'll be lucky if it covered, you know, your cost. Yeah. But, or even uh, if you get your money back. Yeah. Totally. So, like, uh, even from, like, just the outside pr perspective, from your point of view, like, ooh, how can you, how do you, like, compare Chicago graffiti to, like, different graffiti from, like, around the world? Or even uh, if you, even to make it easier within other states? Okay, so, at least um, outside of Chicago, one thing I see, I don't know if it's New York or UK or whatever, mm -hmm. um, they do, gr like, group bombing. And what that means is that they'll have, like, a crew of, like, eight people, right? Uh, there's a train coming, and we'll, we'll, each person knows that this one part of the train is their part. They got to do this. This person does that, and, like, they'll throw a piece up, like, in a minute, two minutes, like, super fast tagging, right? And it's, like, a whole subway cart. You know, in Chicago, I, I have yet to see a whole subway cart to get blown up like that, you know? Maybe, like, an inside. And I'm not talking bad about Chicago artists. Uh -huh. It's just, you know, like what they're doing out there is just like whoa you know like eight people just do this full like i just full respect you know well here in chicago what you'll see is um you'll see a lot one thing i see in chicago is a lot is when people are beefing you'll see it get tagged up you know by a different crew or whatever and you know gangs are one thing you know where gangs are fighting you know you're used to that shit but i never forget i was a logan and i heard yo you're with so-and-so crew and he's like yeah and they literally chased them fucking down because they were part of a different crew and they start going at it. I'm like, damn, bro, they're going hands to hand. And I'm like, they must have covered up a piece or whatever and disrespected them, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, man, at least here in Chicago, they're throwing hands. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, I've seen that too, where like just like different type of groups would like tag over, you know, somebody that they, you know, are beefing with, stuff like that. And I just, I feel like it, it contributes to the, the narrative of it being like negative, you know what I mean? But then again, too, that's that's the culture that has been for like years, you know what I mean? Especially like old school taggers and stuff like that, too. That's that's how it's always been. You know, one thing that people don't know or understand is that, you know, these art groups do have like their areas that they tag in, you know? Like they'll say their home base is Logan, their home base is Pilsen, whatever. You know that this t crew is tagging up walls here. You don't have the right to come over here, the right to come over here and tag your piece on an empty wall over here because it's not your area. So that's one thing you see, and I think that's kind of crazy. It, it is, but like uh, the way I feel like it, it, it's being explained is like making it seem like it's uh, affiliated with like gang activity, though, like which yeah. is completely different, you know, like it's a whole scenario, different thing, but like. It's just, I don't know, it's just like the way you, I guess you guys are just saying it. And it's like, I'm I'm not like, I don't want to, I'm not trying to come off wrong with the graffiti or people, for the people within the graffiti community. But it's like, I don't know if it's just me or it's just 
it's just like I feel like it's always been like related with games, you know, and I, that's something that I don't like, and it's uh, I feel like it's just a big reason why still graffiti to this day has a bad rap, a bad rap, you know. I think yeah. it's just because sorry, sorry, cut you off. I think it's just because uh, people are like a little bit like uneducated about it, like. Us, we can kind of distinct between like the crews, mm-hmm. the muralist, and like the gang fucking uh tags. You know what I mean? Like just because we've been around it all of our lives, but anybody that's not in that community or doesn't know, they're kind of just gonna bunch it all up. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean when you see graffiti tagging, you always will tell. You know, there's a traditional you know symbols that come out, and it never looks good. You know, a uh, uh, gang graffiti artist. Is only literally throwing up lines or little symbol, and that's mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. It's never like a nice piece. It always looks super ugly, and it's just to say that this is their area, you know. Mm-hmm. At least you know, graffiti artists—they're throwing up their name, and when they throw up, like even if it's just the pencil name of it, there's a flow to their artwork, you know, their style. When you see um graf- graffiti by a gang, it's literally like someone just picked up a can and like, oh, let me write my six. It always looks like trash. Right, and right. if that fans, you know, gang graffiti artists, I don't give a shit. Go, you know, I don't, I don't think they're real artists or whatever. But um, at least you know, when it comes to real graffiti artists, you know, mm-hmm. there's always a flow to their style. You know, like you know, it's a graffiti. You know what they're throwing up. You know, I could read that. You could read that. For sure. Yeah. No. I just, just wanted to just say that because, like, I, I think that's what still to people tend to just think of that. But you know it is what it is. Um, I know you're you're you seem you were a, a you're into anime, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, right now I just saw like uh, Crunchyroll did their uh, anime awards. I thought that was pretty dope, and I thought it was kind of cool that they just did like um a red carpet version of it. So like they had like musical acts. They had you know like Megan the Stallion. She was on there. She dressed up What's in uh, in an anime okay, style. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that shit was fucking dope as fuck, you know? And Megan Stanley's a dope-ass fucking rapper, you know? So, yeah. dope as fuck to see her showing love for an anime community. So, I think that's dope. Yeah, How, I you, know. Go ahead. Is, is the anime community growing? Do you guys think so? I, I think so. I think we are we see in everything. Um, Like, we can even go to, like, the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. When um, Usher, he lit, like, a Gojo preview or whatever. And I'm like, oh, cool. He's referencing uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. And like this is Usher. He's about to be in the Super Bowl, you know. Like, you see it in like mainstream culture. You hear it in a lot of our rap songs nowadays. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that's so cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm not really into it like that. I'm just the main one is Dragon Ball Z, of course. Um, uh, I know Jordan and our other guy, our other boy, has been trying to put me on into the anime game. I know he's uh Jordan is like a thing into the Attack of Titans. Yeah, I've got the shirt on and everything too. You already know. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm glad you like it. There's always an anime for everyone. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm glad you like Attack on Titans. What would I you say is your go-to? Huh? What would you say is your go-to? Uh, like, overall favorite? Uh, oh, easily Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Easily one of my go-to favorites. Another one that I really like is Kill la Kill. It's a nice 24 episode. But that was like one that you had to like already like anime and like be able to venture out of it uh-huh. because it has like a this theme to it where you have to be like okay an anime it makes sense and then like the rest of the story is cool mm-hmm. but um like from that that company um one anime that i really like that they have that's a short one like that is called girl and log on that one's like 26 episodes i think and i think that's a perfect nice little anime and i think that one's one that anyone could watch so i think that one's really cool Okay. Yeah, and I don't think I don't think people realize that there's like different categories of like anime shows because there's like very gory ones and like dark <laughs> ones where like Attack on Titan would be or like you know Attack on Titan is crazy, you know. Yeah. You know, the first episode, someone can- <laughs> yeah, yeah, be ready for that shit. There's like um, forgot the other one too. Um, I can't think of it right now. But then there's like romantic animes and just like different types. Furry. Uh huh. So he <laughs> said furry, and I'm like. There's a few like animes I can think that are really furry, but I don't think that's so much a genre. But I can uh-huh. see like why people would think that, you know. But like, no, sometimes... 
I'm only saying that because I'm not sure if it was Jordan and our other guy who were making fun of me or not, but I have a story to this, but it's it's okay. Okay, I hear it. So literally, I'm only saying furry because of this story. So again, mind you this. I'm I'm not really into anime other than just Dragon Ball Z and I guess whatever Jordan would, would pop out if we're smoking together. But I went on my own, explored. I didn't know where to go. So I <laughs> Of course, I went with Netflix first, and there's this uh anime show called B Stars, and it's just animals talking. Like, yeah. Oh, no, there's no humans, nothing animals, and to me, like I'm like, damn, it's pretty cool. It's decent. I'm watching it. The story, the storyline is very like interesting. Like I fucks with it, and I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, it's like something new for me. And then I keep, I went into the boys. They found out while I was watching, started <laughs> talking shit, making fun get of on me. Your ass, bro. Yeah, saying I like to, you know, have sex in in furry costumes. Like, nah, my guy, come on. <laughs> no, I don't remember that conversation. At I don't all. think it was you, bro. I think it was somebody uh, else. I forgot. Okay, That's what I'm okay. saying. But, uh, but yeah. Look, I'll give you the. I'll give you this though. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it is a good anime. I don't think it's a bad anime. The story's good. Oh, you it's seen it too? Yeah, it's an okay. it's a, it's another anime. You have to be open to the idea because at first I saw that I'm like, I'm not watching this furry bullshit. Mm -hmm. I really told myself that, uh -huh. and then I'm like, all right, I'm going to watch. Let me watch it. And no, it was good. It's a good story, so I'm not knocking it. Yeah, like, I liked it. And then at the end, they were like, as long as I guess you you enjoyed the show and all, but I like they were just going on my ass because you know. I guess just knowing me and just my shenanigans, <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, bro. So that's why that's why I always bring up furry shit now because that's the only anime other than you know Dragon Ball Z and shit like that. <laughs> but but yeah, so I mean, I, again, I guess it's, it's just up to people's point of you know choice. You feel me? Yo, one thing, um, like last year or like a couple mm -hmm. years ago, I got introduced into like sports anime. And me mm. being someone that grew up watching like Bears, football, the Bulls, White Sox, mm. I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna watch a fucking cartoon where someone's you know playing a sport. Like, there's no way it's better than a real sport. And I started watching the show called Haikyuu, which is about volleyball. Which I don't watch volleyball as a sport, you know. And for me to think about watching it as an anime, I'm like, nah, I don't know. But no, nah, I really enjoyed it. And I'm like, all right, cool. So that was like my first sports anime. And this last World Cup. Um, that just passed by World Cup or yeah, I think it was World Cup. Um, there was a soccer anime called Blue Lock that started coming out around the same time. And like when I tell you like some of them are good sports anime, like Blue Lock itself, like that goes crazy when it comes to the sports anime. If you're looking for something to like you want to see like sports going all the way to the end, you want to feel like people with egotistical minds, you want to be like Ooh, you know, how can this be even more competitive than a regular sport? Mm -hmm. Like, Blue Lock delivers all of that, and you're never bored. You're never like, uh, there's just, like, little stick characters. No, they put so much detail into it. The, the story really drives the characters. Like, Blue Lock itself, I think that's a solid anime if you want to jump into, like, a sports anime. I'm going to have to look into that. That sounds really interesting, man. I have to it look does. into that. I don't even like soccer like that. The only time I watch soccer is during the World Cup. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait, I'm, and, not, I'm not too sure if, if I'm thinking of the same thing as you were talking about, but I, I do recall when it was the World Cup uh, happening, and I saw around social media where where it was like kind of an anime, but it was a soccer team. And it was like j the, j the Japan soccer team. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually oh, okay. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I was watching clips of it of how they kick the balls and stuff. Like they make it seem like they're very powerful, and it's like, oh yeah. damn, okay, I see. <laughs> so that's, that was really cool. I just um, think it's crazy how there's like so many different categories. You know what I mean? Like there's so many different things on animated for everybody. Like like you're saying, there's sports anime. There's even like food anime. You know what I mean? And there's I was gonna think of another one too, but it just like crossed it, it slipped my mind. But yeah, no, you're hundred percent right. Like. Um, one of like the first uh, food animes that I watched was called Food Wars, and like that first episode's a little weird because they cook octopus and like tentacles come out. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, this is a little odd. But the if you keep if you get past the first episode, they go into like this crazy food competition where you know it's students competing against each other, and which is like oh cooking, but it's like it's almost like an anime battle style style. 
when they're cooking. So it's like, yeah. oh, super aggressive. The cuts are super intricate. Like they're doing feats when they're cooking that, you know, look like superhero like, you know? So Dude, that one got really cool. I'm not gonna um, lie, that the, uh-huh. the food the food in in anime be looking like it's smacking though. I ain't That's gonna what lie. I was gonna say too. The art on like the food anime just makes yeah. it look so like good. Like, especially bro. if you're look... high and you're just looking yeah. at that soup of the ramen noodles or whatever, like damn, let me get some of that. You just want to, like, yeah. go on the screen and grab it, you know what I mean? Yeah. No wonder Goku be, like, munching and crunching real quick on them <laughs> food, boy. <laughs> I, I got to say, I think Robin, visually, always looks great in an anime. Mm-hmm. And in person, I'm like, it looks good, but it never looks, like, anime good. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel you on that. <laughs> um, And there's actually a question that has just been in my mind is... You guys consider the Boondocks anime? Oh, I would say so. Like they... you'll you'll see like a comparison into like uh, Naruto when they do like literally punch for punch that Naruto and Sasuke did in the Boondocks. Yeah, yeah. So uh-huh. I mean, well, as long I feel like anime just has to have like a little bit of a deeper story or a deeper meaning, I would consider it. Do you guys watch it in the original language or do you watch it in the English version? It depends. I don't know. If what I'm, about you, Primo? Uh, personally, okay, so I personally will always try to watch a sub, A, because it comes out first sub. But um, I watch a lot of these episodes the second time with my sister, and she only watches it dubbed. And again, I'm not hating on it, you know? Um, I usually like the sub version more because I feel like there's more feeling behind it. But someone also told me recently, you only feel that way because you don't understand what they're saying. So that kind of fucked with my head. Is what is because you don't understand what they're saying? Yeah, you understand oh. what they're saying when they say it. You know, mm-hmm, you're, you're reading mm-hmm. the words. And you just feel like, you know, when they're talking, you feel it. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yes. when you're reading, you kind of get the delayed reaction because you got to, like, read it. And, and I don't know. For me, personally, like, if I'm too high, I would rather watch the dub version because I'll just get lazy. I'll be like, damn, I don't want to read right now. You know what I mean? But that's that's really the only thing that stops me. <laughs> yeah, there's some that are better in English. I, I have yeah. to say, like, Brotherhood, Full Metal Alchemist, better in English. Mm-hmm. Anyone that wants to argue that, you know, how? Do you consider Dragon Ball the original or the the other version, the English version? Oh, I definitely like um, the English version better. Okay. You, I you try... can't... Yeah, this Japanese version, no offense. I watch it, obviously, but uh-huh. like Goku's Japanese voice is just too high-pitched. Yeah, <laughs> and I feel like they talk too fast there, too. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah, like, fuck, what they say? <laughs> <laughs> bro no i i think it's just some, personally me it's like i i would i just want to know what what they're talking about you feel me like like although the sub like don't get me wrong i'd be watching like just you know normal tv and i just have of course the subtitles on but i don't know just when it comes to like animation the anime it's just like i, I need to know what's going really going on you feel me like I'm, i feel like i'll get lost easy so we were talking about our first dispensary experiences in Illinois. And I remember my first experience was at one of the mission dispensaries. They're only in like the south side of Chicago and like Calumet City. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember it was like fairly like fairly new too, where like you first start started seeing dispensaries pop up. I grabbed the gram. I, I don't remember the strain, but I was like really excited to try it. And it smoked good, it smelled good, you know what I mean? It tastes good, whatever. But then, like, after an hour, the effects kind of wore off. And everybody that I was smoking with said the exact same thing. And, you know, us being new to, you know, the dispensary industry, we kind of thought, like, oh, what if they do that on purpose so that people keep coming back? And then I just, like, reference to other things nowadays, too, like phones, or, like, TVs, how they're not made to last, so just so that you can, like, after a year or two, you have to, you have to buy a new one, a car or something, or computers you know i mean i I just feel like it might be the same for the dispensary and like the cannabis you know community in illinois so like iphones i think they're crazy because obviously we all use our iphones right right i have iphone right now and everything but like i wish you know there was like back in the day the old ipod touches and everything i would open up the screens i'd replace them you know i was able to repair like 
built to last, last, you know? Yeah. So that's cool. But, like, these new iPhones, the way that they build them, it's not so you could, the common person, come in and just pop it out anymore. And it sucks because why shouldn't I be able to fix my own phone, you know? That's crazy, you know? If if the battery is going bad on my phone, why aren't I able to replace that? No, just buy a new phone. Like, right, exactly. Yeah, just buy some more weed, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Go buy some more mids. <laughs> yeah. uh, to touch back at that point, though, like, mm. the, the thing doesn't last. I think it's because the way that we grow weed is isn't for people that, you know, are connoisseurs like me and you. It's not like, because one thing back in the day we didn't know about percentages, you know, we didn't know right. about mm. you know, oh, what was this, you know? And granted, back, you know, when you know, when I was out on the streets doing my own thing, people would be like, Oh, what's the percent of this? <clears throat> and I'm like, Bro, I don't know. I just copped it from the plug or they'd ask what strains and it sounds sh- um shitty, but you know, like, I didn't know. So if it if it hit me like an indica, I would just look up an indica strain and right. like, oh, this sounds appealing. I'll tell people what's this. Exactly. <laughs> no, so we, we've all made our own names before and shit too. You know, I mean, you gotta make up some names as you go along, especially if it's you know you got clientele like that. You know, um, I don't know. I just, I just feel like back then too, like everybody just be like, oh, just give me the gas as long as it gets me high. I don't give a fuck what it is. You know, nowadays with all the technology and like the accessibility of it. I just think like now more people have more options. So now they're more picky, which I think is a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. Cause like people know what they want. They know what they want to smoke. But then at the same time too, it's like, dude, stop being so picky. You know what I mean? Like, You know, the, the reason it's shitty is because in the Illinois market, we know for a fact that, or <clears throat> I guess not for a fact, but you'll see a bunch of fruit flavored strains in Illinois because that's what sells. If you call a cherry this, grape this, you know, apples, a banana this, as long as there's just some sort of like fruit or like sweetness or cake to it, mm-hmm. it sells in Illinois, you know? But like me personally, I love gassy strains. So Thank like you. motor breath, sour diesel, you know, um, an Illinois strain that's gassy is grilled the cheese. Like those strains to me, those are kind of one of my favorites, but you don't see them too often anymore because. People don't want to be like, oh, it smells like gasoline or it smells like, you know, petrol or whatever. And I'm like, that's that real no, shit, that's, though, man. No, that's, that's I don't know what y'all best, talking about. <laughs> that's the best ones out there. Like, I'm, bro. I'm the exact same way. Like, you know, I like the gassy strains, you know, like the jet fuel, like you saying, too, sour diesel. The hypno like, stink. Y'all ever tried the hypno stink? That's just. Man, one of the best strains <laughs> that I've tried, like, the, with that gassy, like, scent and aftertaste was something called Brain Wreck. And, Brain like, wreck? Yeah, the way like the name lived up to the standards, bro. Like my fucking my my uh, head was tingling and shit. You know what I mean? Like it definitely was something, something worthwhile. Yeah, um, I don't know if it was a real strain or whatnot, but my plug had gave me. It was one of like the more expensive weeds that he had. Mm-hmm. Um, it's called Alien Rock Candy, and to this day, probably one of my favorite. And we have stuff like Miracle, um, like Mac. That's Miracle Alien on um, cookies. Right. And I'm like, that's never like alien rock candies I had back in the day. When I had that, it was like a sweet, um, like sweet candy like flavor. Mm-hmm. Um, I had like some crazy euphoric stony ass high, like like bro, what the fuck did I smoke? And you know, late if you know, as a real weed person, you know when it's laced, you know, that's not that wasn't that, you know, that was not laced weed. This is like legit, like good ass shit. Right. Yeah, nowadays you gotta be careful, man. You be seeing some pictures from the plugs that be all white and shit. You gotta be double oh. thinking if it's even, you know, laced with angel dust or not, because they be saying, nah, it's tricones or whatever it is. And nah, man, it don't look right. That's what I'm nah, saying. People right, throw right. that THCA powder on that shit and be like, oh, yeah, it's, you know, high quality shit. I'm like, yo, you're just dressing up ugly weed, you know? Like, that's really what that is. Have you well, seen the, those like strains, like the snowballs and stuff like that? Like, have you tried those strains, or you're like just stay away from that? I I haven't tried them personally. I haven't had been able to get my hands on it personally. Mm-hmm. Um, for the most part, I'll smoke everything at least once. So like crazy shit like that, yeah, I'll try it once. You know, every cannabis product, yeah, I'll try it once. Um, like one one product I want to try, there's like an inhaler on Cali, where you know just and it does like one big puff of THC. I think that's kind of cool. Really? 
Yeah, Damn. one pro- one product that's went illegal right away that came out, and from what I know was real, was called um, Canna Bumps, right? Literally, <laughs> white powder, THCA powder, that you were able to snort and get high off of. Get the hell out of here. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah it, it was real. And I guess, like, the science was, um, obviously, when it goes through your nose, it enters the bloodstream. <laughs> so, you know, THC can get, you know, processed through the bloodstream. So, that was a product. Literally, like, one day on the market, it blew up. And, like, by the second and third day, down. Like, no, this is not what cannabis is about. We are not cocaine. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> I get that shit, you know? Like, you don't want to tie yourself with another illegal drug. But, like, me as a cannabis connoisseur and someone that believes in exploring, like, your mind mm-hmm. with, you know, any type of, like, you know, um, adults, you know, entertainment, whatever, you know, that's your personal choice. You know, what you decide to do, as long as it's not harming others, is your choice. Yeah. And I thought, you know, taking a can of bump would be kind of cool. <laughs> that's fun. I could just imagine that, you know, all oh, they're just looking at you and you'd be like, no, don't worry, it's cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> not cocaine, it's weed. <laughs> yeah, the cocaine people would look at you, it's like, oh, that's like, that's like Coke Light. Right. right. <laughs> Del- Delta eight cocaine. No. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's funny. Um, well, I was about to say something too that 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 also got pretty pretty bad, but I forgot what was it. Um, I literally forgot. Fuck. Um, I got a question for you, Primo. Have you ever tried like the moon rocks and stuff like that? Like, I know they're not around today, but I know it's like no, kind of sort of like an older thing. This really, I've never I've never seen any of those like on a disco. I've only like got them off like the street. I don't know. Yeah. And um, there's a brand that specifically always will be putting them out. They're called Nature's Grace and Wellness. Mm-hmm. First of all, they're an awesome company. They're really down to earth. Um, I've met like um, their head of like person that does like their sales and everything. His name is Dave. Cool guy. Um, but they're always putting out like real out of, out of like uh, what's the right word? But they're putting products out there that you know other people aren't always putting out first and not. I respect them a lot for that. They're always venturing and trying out stuff. Sometimes it's not always great, but they're the only people that are doing moon rocks. And I think that's dope because there's people that want to go buy moon rocks. No, yeah. I mean, I definitely I definitely want to try it again. Like, I remember I was, like, moon rock crazy for a while just because, like, I had, I had it first and, like, I smoked it out of a bowl. I was like, damn, this shit got me high as hell. You know what I mean? And ever since then, I just kept searching for it, searching for it, but... We were talking about snowball, so that's why I just wanted to mention the moon rocks because it's it's not it's not similar, but it's like so, like a little bit. Similar. I think it's similar enough. The only thing I have with moon rocks is it's very messy. Yeah. So like, mm-hmm. it's definitely best to like smoke out of maybe glass, but like there's like a certain bowl for it. I personally roll it in the blunt, but even then, yeah, yeah. it's still tough. Um, I, you know, I like my dabs. I like, I guess, I have a respect for it where I think it's better separate. Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't feel like, you know, they don't bring out the best of each other. Uh, what I do like is sometimes I put a little bit of dab in my blunts, whatever, and, like, yeah, in the center. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like doing that. Or, you know, um, if you buy, like, um, the pads or whatever that are meant to twax, I like doing that. Yeah, no, definitely. Especially with moon rocks, like, I, I always try to mix it with weed. Like, I like, feel like some, like, if it was, like, a... Uh, beginner smoker, they'll definitely just try to put it in a pipe and smoke it, and then they'll be like, "Why isn't it smoking?" You know what I mean? It's like because there's wax in there and teeth. Yeah, it'll clog up. It's not just yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Make make you feel like you're not smoking it right. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. No, I should. Yeah, right. I actually do remember my question. Uh, but it's like what I just kind of I think you mentioned it, Primo. It's it's a little bit that you mentioned a little bit, and it's uh the powder THCA. Is it THCA powder? Is that something new in the market here? Because um, I've never seen it until no, like yeah, recently. The market, um, so like Cresco does it, and they call it like live sand. Uh-huh. And Revolution does it, and it's THCA powder. You see, like in the white distillate powder. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just pure THC. And is it more like a dab, or is it more like for you to mix it with your flour? So you can dab it. Okay. I personally, with the THCA powder, the way I most enjoy it is I'll mix it with another dab. 
So mm. it'll help elevate it more just because there's more THC. Uh-huh. But like just taking it by itself, I don't like it because I'm someone that believes in the terpenes. And like you notice when like there's some certain type of taste or smell with it and when you smoke it, your high is way different, way better. It changes it. And THCA powder, in my opinion, loses a lot of that. Okay. Okay. But yeah, because I was talking to somebody recently and they were showing me like the website. I forgot what, what dispensary it was, but it's, they were showing me the powder. I'm like, holy shit, like what, what's going on? You know, like that was new shit they're, they're bringing out. <laughs> yeah, that, that would scare me. If someone fucking was rolling a blunt and then like sprinkled THCA powder on it, I'm like, no, right. what are you doing, bro? <laughs> was I'd be like, what the fuck is that, bro? Right. <laughs> you know, that angel dust out here. <laughs> right. <laughs> THCA powder, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's up, bro. But like, okay, so like, I guess you know us smokers from from Chicago and all. Like, what what I guess for the audience, what would what would be like a good brand, uh, recommending for for one to try here in the city? Okay, so like, if you want to talk about like homegrown, home native, like best brand in Illinois, it's always Revolution. There's no question about it. Uh, Revolution's um, Illinois' number one brand. They won like 20 awards, mm-hmm. rightfully, you know. I don't think they're ever slacking. I think they're the most innovative when it comes to like new strains and everything. And when they call themselves a craft bro, you can really see the difference. While other like bigger companies um do like their premium line, the care to detail still isn't there. And don't get me wrong, there's good flour out there. There's a lot of companies that like their flour and everything. Mm-hmm. But like Revolution's um, craft grow is just I don't know. It's just a different ballpark, you know. They they're hitting harder, and you know they're doing a better job. And they don't have to put 30, 40 percent weed out there. You know, it's rare when they do, but um, their twenty percent weed is slapping. You know, uh, mm-hmm. if it's eighteen percent from them, I'll try. I'll try it out. Uh, me as a connoisseur, I personally believe um, as long as it's over fifteen percent, it'll probably get the job done. And I and I've had one of my favorite strains was Jelly Bean. And that one tested 15, 16%, very smiley, uplifting high. And I'm like, yo, I'm uh, someone that smokes all the time. This weed's good enough for me. There's no way that you're telling me it's not good enough for you. No, yeah. And I think that even uh, we discussed it before, too, in other previous episodes. That's like, um, don't always go for the highest because, you know, you're, you're going to get a better high with a lower percentage. Little do you know than, you know, the one that has the highest THC. But then again, I think it depends on how you want to experience your high and what you're 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 smoking it for, or using it for. It's different for everybody, definitely. Yeah. I, I was gonna ask you, Primo. Um, how do you feel about like? Cause I know like some of the big like name brands too, like that I've always seen in dispensaries is like Rhythm and Cresco. Yeah. How do you feel about those? Cause I, like I've some of the stuff from Rhythm is good, but I've had bad like good and bad experiences. And then with Cresco too, their vapes are good, but then I've had good and bad experiences with the flower and vapes. So I think everyone, you know, for the most part, has something that they're really good at. Um, if you ask me for Cresco, like Cresco, I think they make phenomenal vapes. Mm-hmm. Their liquid live resins definitely taste different than other live resins. Like there's a certain quality that they put into their parts that other people aren't putting out there. And me personally, um, if you ask me, I'm a big rhythm fanboy. You know, I like rhythm flower. I like rhythm concentrates. But I'm gonna be honest with you. If you want me to be honest, uh their vape game to me isn't their best and they're a company that's aligned themselves with PAX and PAX is known, you know, multi-state, you know, it's a device that it's pod like, it's just like, you know, um, I forgot what the, the tobacco brand was called, but you know, it looks just like that, you know? Oh, they're like the little jewel bands. Is it, um, yeah. what is it? I'm, I'm thinking of the um, Stizzy. No. Yeah. Stizzy does one like that too. Okay. But, okay. But I feel like, Stizzy is the cool version of it that everybody mm. knows. Uh-huh. While Pax was more of a version where they they had like an herbal vaporizer they were known mm. for. So when they came out and they started doing their pods and everything too with weed, I'm like, oh, cool. This is a brand that you already know mm. does a good job doing this. And now they're coming out with weed. It was disappointing to not have, you know, like better vapes from Rhythm. And whether you do their packs or you do their... Um, their uh, what's it called their um regular vapes the five time threads i don't know I, I, 
I don't ever think that their vapes are my favorite vapes, but mm-hmm. like I love their dabs. I think they make one of the best dabs. Um, they were the only company to be able to compete with like live rosin at at the last um, cannabis um, awards or um, high times. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone that placed in it, first and third place were rosin. They won second place with the cured concentrate. And a cured concentrate means that it was a BHO product, you know? Mm-hmm. And the difference between rosin and BHO, for the people that don't know, is rosin, pure water. So, you know, your flower is considered the cleanest version um, dab that you can get when you do rosin. And when you do a BHO, you run, you know, butane through it, and then you have a curing process. But that curing process eliminates 99.9% like, of the butane that was in there. And, of course, we always have to say that because if a little bit goes through, you know, it's, you know, it's impossible to get like everything. But for the most part, you know, it gets taken out. So it's safe. And when they had their dabs, their cured concentrate, there was great taste to it. It was never dry. There was a great color to it. And like the effects were there. I'm someone that cares about the effects. So like if, if this $20 eighth is going to get me super blasted, I'll pick up this $20 eighth. But, you know, if this $60 eighth also gets me blasted, I'll pick it up because it's good weed. You know, I, I enjoy this, but I care about getting high. If you're going to sell me a product and s- sell it to me for 80 bucks and say this is the cleanest version and I don't get high off of it, I don't give a shit how clean it is because I didn't get high off of it. Yeah. You know, I care about the facts. I'm someone that is there for, I believe in the medicinal side, but I definitely am there for like, you know, the recreational side. Yeah, like your your experience, your journey with it. You feel me? Because yeah, 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 every strain is gonna be different, and of course, you want the best out of out of the strain that you're you're consuming out of. You feel me? For sure. Yeah. So then, I guess go going back to the cannabis industry here is like what what it's a question for both of you guys on your point of views is like what do you guys think is what's missing here? That that I guess is is what uh, yeah like what is what is what is one thing that's missing here? Hmm. Compared to uh, what? Uh, I, so, I, I guess, just, well, I guess I don't want to say in general because I think that'll be too broad, but I guess for one, you know, for like a consumer like us, like for us. One, one thing is that the cost of the cannabis just has to go down. There's no reason that weed should be this expensive. You know, in will it ever go down though? Do you think would it ever go down here? The way that Illinois has set up their their system or whatever, they'd have to eat a lot of shit, and I and I I mean that in order for it to what's it called go to like the way we see like in Arizona or Cali, mm-hmm. because out there, you know, you could walk into a dispo, get a four dollar pre roll, and I mean four dollars out the door. You know, that's with their tax and everything, and you'll get high. You know, it wasn't like top shelf weed but it's weed like yeah man i feel pretty high you know like and you enjoyed yourself and there's nothing wrong with that but here in illinois the minimum they're gonna spend maybe like 20 bucks you know catch a sale maybe you'll pay 15 maybe you'll pay 12 but you know that's if you're getting lucky and you'll know if the weed that's on sale is on sale because it's about to expire you know if that weed's on sale because it's from a bad batch so those are other gambles that you're taking here when you buy cheaper weed in the Illinois market. And that sucks, you know, because why shouldn't you be able to go down to your local dispensary and buy my my nightly smoke? You go to the gas station to buy your nightly beer, you know, like no one's telling you, oh, you have to go to Benny's, stock up on your fucking 24 pack. You know, like that's kind of shitty. Yeah. No, I definitely agree with Primo. I think that it's definitely the price that has, like, that's a problem and just overall quality, like, not quality, but consistency. Because yep. I've tried same the same strains at two different times and gotten two completely different reactions. You know what I mean? Well, so. well then, uh, but here's one thing with uh, part of the thing is with uh, my experience is uh, when the first stages of rec- rec- uh, recreational cannabis was out, um, my dad gave me a eighth of Cresco from D33. Yeah. And, and, just by looking at it and feeling the texture of of the flower was one dry, and mm-hmm. and like 
not even for me to like even grind it with my hands but like right away it turned into like sand to me like like it was like a sandy weed and it's like i didn't like that at all and it's like come on like what what is this shit well that's one thing that i feel like the other market misses a lot you know you never get that weed that's very sticky pull apart you know yeah and it's something that i personally miss you know whether it's the fact that we don't have hydration packets in a lot of products or it's just the curing process that Illinois decides to go. I know a lot some other places, they'll cure flour month, two months, whatever, you know, low to retain, you know, properties of the plant, whatever. Illinois sometimes has um, a curing process where a week, two weeks, you know, and I don't know the in and outs of how the curing process goes in Illinois. But why why is it going that fast? You know, you're not you're saving everything that's best of the plan. You know, you're just doing the most you can do to meet the standard for it to be, you know, sellable. So that's kind of shitty. But you know, time is money. <clears throat> these companies have to be able to move these products out as much as they can because they have such a large cost overhead mm -hmm. that they can't afford it to wait a month or two months for their plant to you know be the perfect plant for you to smoke. You know. But, Which but sucks. It does suck. But then again, so like, let's say, um, because it's Cresco is a, a, a MSO, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So why is it that an MSO cannot take its time to come out with the best product, but, but yet like, like just market it, like if 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 it's really the best, like. Like knowing there's people like us that care about the plant, care about the terpenes, care about how we feel when we are high. Like, why can't these MSOs really, you know, provide the ex the great experience for, for us as what they're very known for? You feel me? Like, so like, one thing that you'll you'll see um, from these MSOs, mm -hmm. they had like these big ass, you know, like grows and everything, and each of the grows, they're there's a place for the nursery where they're barely starting off. Mm -hmm. There's a place while they're starting to grow. There's a place for flowering. And each one of those have like a two week or one week interval where, you know, they're this stage, this stage, this stage. So, you know, it's a, literally a time schedule. You know, they got everything timed out. So the moment that they decide that, you know, they try to cut costs as much as possible. So if they can cut, the curing process for like two weeks or whatever instead of a month or two months of course you're going to try to do it because they're going to cost at the end this is a business to them and they'll do their best that they can to you know provide a product that you know is going to be considered enjoyable at the most effective cost and like this is where i believe we should be allowing craft can um, cannabis license more to people because us who like you know this sticky icky or like this very aromatic flower it takes time and time is something that either costs money for these bigger companies for us we're lucky enough to you know have the freedom to you know put time into our care because this might be considered a hobby because we have something else that we're doing or whatever so you know we have that time but big companies they don't have that time and I think that's something that's like very I'm trying to think of a better word than sad, but that's like the only thing that's coming to mind right now because like <laughs> I don't know, like if, well, if, if they if they're is. the giants, you said what? Because it, it, it is. I mean, like yeah. think about it, bro. I mean, like let's like okay, because I hate that we always have to compare weed to, to alcohol when it's completely different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, how are you gonna? How are we gonna say that Modelo is the fucking best? But yet, Modelo be giving out, be be sending, let's say I don't know, like every every month, a shit ton of beers that are isn't even like, like good. You feel me? Like like it's like how 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 would that you know how how is that gonna look to the world? You feel me? Like a big ass you know brand that is very known all around the world for for a good beer, but yet when we're tasting it or whatever, it's not even like how it, how it is or how it used to be like. Like why so, why can't it be like that for cannabis? One thing I personally think is that, um, uh, and you know we're throwing Cresco because they're not MSO, they're Illinois. Mm -hmm. We're talking them. I don't think they're out there trying to put bad product out there, but I think you know 
once a product comes out, good or bad, if they grew it out for the time it met certain qualities, they're going to put it out there. Unfortunately, you know, if it didn't hit, it didn't hit, but they still have to sell it because they can't just scratch it either. They can't be like, well, this is just a bad batch. Just so I'll throw it away because they already invested so much money into it. So unfortunately, that cost gets put down to the Illinois, um, you know, person that has to purchase it. And sometimes it sucks because they'll put a cool name. They'll call it like, there's just something out there. You know, they'll call it like mango runs, right? And like, ooh, mango runs, you know, that sounds super tasty. Let me try it out. I'm like, oh, this sucks, you know. And it just sucks. You know, I, if we had craft growers. He's like, and it just sucks. <laughs> <laughs> nah, if we had craft growers, we had craft licenses, it'd be cool mm -hmm. because we'd have be able, we'd have the stinky stuff, the sticky stuff. You know, we wouldn't have just what sells in the dispos because they'd be catering to people like me and you. But we're not the ones shopping always in the dispos, you know? The yeah. people shopping in the dispos are maybe like, oh, I just take this one time before I go to sleep at night, and that's mm -hmm. good enough for me. We're the smokers that, yeah, I smoke one in the morning, one at lunch, one in the afternoon. And when you tell that to some people, it's like, damn, you're smoking that much weed. But like for people that normally smoke, it's like, oh, no, you know, that's literally normal. Yeah, yeah, like your daily routine, you know, this is like a, a, a cup of beer, a cup of wine, you know, however money mm -hmm. you, you take is up to you, you know, <laughs> but I, I always tell people that I smoke weed so mm -hmm. I could enjoy like other people's presence more because like I'm chiller, I'm cooler, I'm, you know, happier, you know, if I wasn't smoking as often, I'd probably be a little bit more upset, pissed, annoyed, whatever. So mm -hmm. it's just for me to be able, you know, you to enjoy my presence and for me to enjoy your presence too. So that's the way I feel. And I feel like I'm someone that focuses off of it. Yeah. Yes, I've seen people like smoke and like, don't drive, bro. Like, do not drive. <laughs> man, you're, you're fucking bad. But like, me personally, <laughs> I consider myself a professional. Like, I, I smoke, I drive. Yeah. Not, not that I can it. And like, I'm perfectly fine. I think it helps my road reach. <laughs> no, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> you let other motherfuckers pass by you and shit. <laughs> I, I ain't got time to deal with this shit. Right? <laughs> no, no, I just think it's crazy too, like how Chino was like comparing the weed to the alcohol industry. Like even now too, like there's microbreweries and like that make craft beers and stuff. I've I've been to a couple, especially in Chicago or in Illinois. And like it's just crazy how they're able to get the consistency of every single batch where it's like I've tried it before, I've tried it again, it's always good. But in cannabis industry, it's something adult, different. I, I will say that. Yeah. And I just think it's like different with the cannabis because like you were saying too, a lot of factors that go into it, you know what I mean? I I'm pretty sure it is way more complicated to make a batch of cannabis rather than, you know, a batch of um beer but you know what i mean i just feel like it should be the same if they're both on the legal scale they're both something that's trying to be monetized by illinois uh i just i don't know i just think that hopefully one day it would be that way again you know we're still fighting for a lot of legislation for you know cannabis i think once it starts to be federally recognized as something that annual consume we'll start seeing a lot of these barriers to entry get rid of um Again, there's no reason that, you know, a lot of our homies that grow a flower that are part of this community underground shouldn't be allowed to be able to sell these, you know, markets. Why is it that, again, it's our people that are hurting, you know? Yeah. It yeah. be legal, but it's only legal if you can pay for it, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's shitty. It is, my guy. And then I um, actually wanted to touch base that we haven't touched base on. And it's, uh, you know, our, our people our community, our our culture with the plant itself, you know, and, and it's more of like la, la, the Latino community, you know, with cannabis. And how how's your point of view with that? Like with our culture and the plant itself. Okay. So like it sucks with our culture because we have like two parts to it. The first part where is, there was a time that our people definitely used it medicinally a lot. Like your great grandmas or your grandmas, you might have seen them with a, a bottle, like a glass bottle or whatever, mm -hmm. of alcohol. And inside of it was a plant, and that plant was cannabis. And that they would throw on their body 
and they would be known for rubbing it because we knew they knew that if um, the THC and everything, those properties could be extracted through alcohol, and they were using it. And now, with the second part of our culture, our religious side, we frowned upon the, the plants a lot because we associated with you know like devil or whatever, you know, um, getting high is a sinful act or whatever. Mm-hmm. So we stopped doing you know some of our old remedies just like that because we associated with cannabis being a bad thing. And that's because the Mexican or Latino community is so influenced by church. You know, I, I'm someone that grew up with the church. I did my whole, up to my confirmation. Now, personally, I don't see myself as a religious person, but I do respect people's religion. I I hope at the end of the day that people that are religious are being religious to either be a better version of themselves or to, you know, help bring better into the world but never to judge because I feel like that's a lot what religion does do is judge a lot. Hell yeah. A lot for something that I, I I think it's a lot of people are kind of follow, I think some similarities, but just in a different way or a different form of explaining it to one's culture, or to one's religion. Like um, I know like, for example, like Christian and Catholic, it's almost similar to the same but it's just one thing that they don't believe in that catholics do and it's like Mm -hmm. it's like some people say like catholics are like the hardcore christians you know so i don't know the whole like saints and not saints and all that i'm Mm -hmm. pretty sure there's more differences but like i don't know i feel like me the catholic religion i don't know i just can't see eye tie with everything that they do but again as long as you're doing it for the right reasons power to you right right you don't think uh if our like our like you know mother mothers aunts grandmas mm-hmm. you know like could probably get you know the wrong propaganda of like like when it comes to like cannabis do with like those narcos and stuff like that too you know like or you don't think you don't they, think they so do. like there there there's sadly a community that's been affected a lot by the war on drugs mm-hmm. you know there's someone that you'll see you know, in Mexico, you know, in the part I'm at, um, my mom's from Guerrero Iwala. And it wasn't like recent, but a couple of years back, the medicals went in there. They went to like the schools and all the businesses and, you know, teachers, people that make tortillas, whatever. They're like, hey, you know, we're here. You got to pay this protection fee, blah, blah, blah. And for the people that did, they didn't, um, you just saw them get their heads, you know, staked out at the outskirts of the town. So, you know, like, damn, you know, mm-hmm. it's crazy, you know, like those articles were there and what could you do, you know, because your police couldn't protect you. You pay these stuff and it's, just, I don't know, man. To, of course, you're going to have a negative outlook on drugs because the people that are, you know, dealing with drugs and, you know, are in that business, you know, are doing bad stuff. So that's kind of crazy. Yeah. And again, I think as well with us, it's, 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 the educational at home um and, and i see that i've seen that a lot within my experience with within the my household with especially with my parents um just they didn't like the fact of the involvement of cannabis but the more you know i taught them the education and they i guess started to you know realize even more and just i guess as well you know it's it's legal now you know majority of, of the states are becoming legal it seems to be a little more lenient now than back in the day, so I think that I think that's just like a good moving forward step. One thing I think is cool is that you know I work in the industry with a lot of people, and you know I hear people that they smoke with their parents and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad's cool, but he's not really a smoker. Like sometimes with his friends, he'll like pop out a joint, or whatever. But he was never one to smoke. It wasn't until like recently that he just kind of picked it up. Uh, my mom personally, though, she's totally against it. You know, obviously, I'm in this industry. She knows what I do. There's no, I don't hide this from her. She knows I smoke and everything, but we'll never see eye tied to this. As much as I show her, introduce her, I show her medicinal people, you know, she's heard stories of people I help and everything. Uh-huh. At the end of the day, she doesn't care. She thinks I do something bad. Mm. So that kind of sucks. You know, I opened up the dispensary. She wasn't there to support me. And, you know, as a Latino, I feel like I understand why, you know, but I don't know. You hear other people have, you know, good times with their parents. 
Yeah, can't relate though. <laughs> My don't smoke yeah, either. <laughs> so yeah. uh, I'll be I'll be I'll be joking around with him. Though. I'll be like, you trying to take a hit? Come on, man. I know you need it. I know you need it. I know stress is work is stressful. I know work stressful. Come on, man. I tell her all the time, man. I'm like, man, you're too stressed from work. Just you know, let me give you a piece of chocolate. You'll be all uh, better. Like, right. stop it. <laughs> uh, gallito, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, but I, I don't know. I feel like, like, I think just for us, I it's it's just needs to be. It has to. I feel like for us Latinos, it's a more just more push forward to for it, and and I think a, a more better and formal, I think, explanation way where I think one could still understand, you know, and, and that's. But then again, I think it's it's not meant for everybody, and everyone's gonna have its point of view. Sadly, you know, I agree with you hundred percent. And you know, you know, we talked about how like you know cannabis, you know, is rooted in our community. But like one thing we could touch base on is how like United States, you know, as a country, we used to spell marijuana with an H, right? Mm -hmm. But once we started getting the Latino movement into it. We changed the marijuana H to a J because they're more associated with Hispanics and everything. And it just sounded more, you know, immigrants. When you say marijuana and marijuana, it just, and they tried tying that to Latinos and making it look like a negative thing because we were the big immigrant at that time. So I think that's kind of crazy, you know, how they, you know, put that negative connotation to it. Mm. And then another thing too is that. I feel like we don't get the the I feel one is the I see, how can I say this either the respect or the recognition for the industry. I feel like as the community of the, the Latinos don't really get that, you know, recognition or the respect. Like I must mentioned, it's more like it's either the whites or the blacks. So don't get me wrong, like yeah. it props to them and all, but then again it's like what about us, you know? What about our people? And that, that's one thing I talk about with a bunch of people. You know, that's the reason I, I'm with the social equity company. I'm with 1937 is because they're Latino, you know. I love my black brothers and sisters. Shout out to Grasshopper, Black Owned Dispensary, Viola's Down the Street, Black Athlete Dispensary. You know, I love black companies. I'm all for them. You know, I have a lot of, you know, friends that are a part of the black community and, you know, power to them. I want to see everyone come up. There's someone that's, you know, been hurt by the war on drugs. Of course, I want them to benefit from that. You know, they were out in the streets with us. You know, real recognizes real, and you know, power to them. But again, just because power to them doesn't mean that you know I don't feel like our people deserve their own spotlight. You know, yeah, again, we were there with them. You know, it wasn't while well, we always talk about how it's a black community. You know, in Chicago, we're a very diverse community. We know, like the Latino community has been here. And they have been affected by this war on drugs. We know friends that have been arrested by this war on drugs. You know, right now, personally, I have a friend that just went to court the other day because she got caught selling tinctures. And I'm like, bro, it's 2024 and people are still going to trial for trying to sell cannabis. I think it's crazy, you know? So I don't know. And again, you know, it, I'm all for, you know, everyone coming up on top, but like, we deserve our own recognition too. We are a minority, you know, as much mm -hmm. as people want to take away our boxes when we check out, you know, uh, how we identify, there's no more Latino, mm -hmm. you know? Right, right. We're still, we're still we're white. Yeah. And it's, it's like, how, dude? How? <laughs> I, that's so crazy. I put Native American or Pacific Island there, you know, like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> This guy. <laughs> make your own little checkbox latino <laughs> <laughs> there you go no but honestly it would be super dope though to to see a hispanic you know open up a dispensary or just just something that gets to do with cannabis related you know because like again i feel like we need to to get that recognition and you know we 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 grow we grew it in our own in our motherland you know we I, how you said it, we our ancestors used it, you know. Like, come on, man. Yeah, you you always hear about you know when like these old heads come in and he's like, back in the day, I was only able to get like three strains of weed. That Mexican Acapulco, mm -hmm. uh, um, I'd be able to get um that Colombian something, 
or I'd get um what's the other ones they always said? But you know, they always threw Mexican and like you know, you have old heads always throwing like all that Mexican weed or whatever, like so you know we've been a part of this community, so don't take away from us. You know, we've been a part of it, you know, we're gonna still continue to give forward to it. You know, we're here and yeah, of course we like to be recognized as for being Latino too, you know? Yeah, for sure, bro. But I, I, I don't know if it's probably what could be one factor, but you don't think as a Latino person, like we're kind of like, um, like hesitant to 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 be in this community. Do you think that could be? Yeah, one? I think that that's a big thing. You know, I think a lot of us Latinos, if we're putting our face out there, we're probably the first generation that might be putting our face out there. You know, I come from like a one and a half generation. My mom, she's from the motherland. My dad's from here. But, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm technically like first generation. You know, like, of course, this doesn't look, you know, you know, kindly upon my mom. My dad just so happens to be very open minded. So he's like, I'll support you in anything you want to do, you know, so props to him. But like, you know, it's hard for us Latinos to be able to go into this industry and be able to, you know, openly speak about it. Why? Because my parents won't talk about it. They won't tell their coworkers that, oh, you know, they'll be talking to their coworkers. My son does this, this, and that. My son, this, and that. Mm-hmm. Never, my mom will never tell, like, oh, my, my son, you know, GM or brand ambassador for his weed company. Hell yeah. Well, my mom wouldn't say shit either. <laughs> yeah. She'll probably be like, he works at X and Y and Z. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I just think it's just like the the home training, you know what I mean? That's just what, it's just what they grew up off, you know what I mean? Like it's just so hard to get from that mentality. Like other other, like the white and the black um community don't really have that home training to think like it's negative. Like I feel like more of the like elderly black community is actually open to it, you know what I mean? Like I've I've seen like a lot of grandmas and just like, you know, grandpas just be you know like oh i love it you know I'll, I'll smoke it every day you know what i mean and it's it's just yeah. very very different and like how you were saying earlier like how there's like a connotation to it too because like I've, I've heard people saying too like oh yeah they got the mexican brick weed like they they associate the mexican weed with like you know just the stuff that's like not going to get you too high it's like always dark you know what i mean always something that's going to be crumbly and stuff like that and i don't know i, I feel like that plays a lot into it as well um, you know, like, you know, for, for like white and black people, like, I feel like at least for black people, you have them going back to the roots. Like when we talk about like jazz being like, you know, like the most popular era, you know, you always hear about jazz artists who were yes. mostly black right. smoking cannabis. So, you know, this is a part of their history, you know, but as a Latino, I can't tell you any history about my grandma and grandpa smoking weed. I don't know anything if they did. They took that shit to the grave, you know, like. Oh um, yeah, imagine grandma, how many how many family members we we don't even know might have smoked weed. <laughs> yeah, bro, because and... hide that shit. Dude, they're not open about it. Right. <laughs> Damn man, uh, and, but and like white people, they they you know they either white people they could be a part of like the hippie like you know mm-hmm. style. And that's cool, you know, like, you know, cannabis, peace, love, flower, all that stuff. And that's why they're cool with cannabis. Or they could be on the money side where, like, well, cannabis is a real product that makes X, Y, and Z amount of money. Really yeah, true. it's definitely a cash product. Mm-hmm. And they'll recognize that as, you know, a profitable product, you know? So, again, they have a different mindset towards that. But as a lot, you know, I feel like there's not that mindset. It's a bad drug. There's no good thing coming out of it, you know? And and like how you said, I think for us, like the the Latinos who are in this industry, who are like how you said, putting our faces out there, it should be like the turning point. We should be the turning point where we should be educating the new generation of Latinos, or even if we have the chance to educate the old generation still, you know. We but we still, I feel like we need to make uh, like a change in this. I. I there's a lot of fights to fight, you know, like right now, one fight that we're trying to do is, you know, create cannabis as in every type of environment, you know, if we're able to smoke a cigarette at a party or drink a beer at a party, why should anyone look at you different for smoking a joint at a party, you know, 
-hmm. So that's one fight that we're trying to have. The next fight we'll have is, you know, making our families that are more against it, you know, like to introduce them to it. But there's only so many fights you can fight at once, you know? Yeah, that's true. That's true. But actually, we're going to our last topic of the day, Primo, Primo and that is our, right. our sneakers. So we gotta be on our fresh on our feet, bro. We gotta be fresh on the feet. So, so high key, I didn't get into the sneaker game, so I started working with Dispo. You know? Really? Damn. Yeah, so I'm probably like year two into my sneaker game, but um, you know, I started seeing people, you know, in the Dispos with shoes. You know, obviously people with Jordans and. How are you not gonna like Jordans from Chicago? Mm -hmm. But my dad, he was a big Adidas head, so I always liked a lot of superstars, you know. Mm -hmm. So I never rocked too many Jordans. But I started working at this bowl, so many Jordan people. I'm like, yo, I like how those look, how those look. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna cop me one of the, you know, like OGs, the 13s, you know, one through 13s, you know, because those are considered yeah. the real Jordans. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, sometimes the 14s. I mean, I, I, people I sometimes. don't really know, though. Like, the 14s and the 15s could be decent sometimes, you know I, I mean? feel like the 14s, you just, you got to be, I feel like a real, real, you know the shoe game. Mm -hmm. so, I like I 14s, mean, too, but, like, yeah, after that, you kind of lose me, you know? Yeah, I know. I feel like, I feel like you could tell the true sneakerhead by, like, the type that they have on, because, like, nowadays, too, it's like nothing but ones and dunks, all the stuff that looks exactly yep. the same. You know what I mean? I saw the other day somebody with a pair of 15s. I was like, damn, like I've never seen those in a while. And then, and like, I honestly would probably just go up to 15, but sometimes it just depends on the colorway. You know what I mean? Other than that, like the 16s, 17s, they look like they look crazy, bro. I'm like, nah, I can't. <laughs> oh, shit. I, I think, um, so I think my first pair of Jordans that I got were the reverse taxis. That dropped like in Christmas two years ago. Right. Mm -hmm. And that, that started off my sneakers. I think I know they're going to be mad if I get this wrong. I think they're the 11s. Um, um, which 11s? The reverse oh, taxis. Are they? Oh, are, wait, is it not I the think, ones? No, I think he's thinking of the 12s, maybe. The, um, the 11s are the ones yeah, with like. 12s. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, is it the oh, all black? black? Taxi, so yeah, they're the reverse. Like it's all black, and then the bottom is like white. Oh. Like where the regular taxis are like all white, and then the black. No, no. So I caught the black taxis. It's all black, and it has like a, a little, little yellow, a little gold on the side. Oh, okay, yes, okay. I know what you're talking about. Yes, I know those came out. I think last year, or was it two years ago or last year? I think it was two years around Christmas. Okay, I think so. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so that, that was my first pair. Um, I ended up picking up some ones, and I I learned right away that you don't buy mid ones. You either get yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were just me yeah, and Cena were just talking about that, bro. We when we went to the mall the other day. Yeah, literally, so it was like two, two days ago. Yeah, it's a it's a good colorways, but, but yeah, you don't. You, I don't can't, personally. Bro. Yeah, I just can't. I can't with the mids, bro. I just can't. Yeah, so obviously high tops now, but. Yeah, um. <laughs> you can also um, go with the with the what's it called again? The top is it not not top fly? Was the, the the wannabe sevens? What is, what is oh, it? Oh, the flights, or flights. Whatever? Yeah, flights. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know about those, man. I don't know. Like it's so funny too, cause like growing up too, like I was always into that stuff too. But like everybody called the flights like the Mexican Jordans, you know? What I, mean? yes! I, I, I was like, damn, that's crazy. Like why do why do we get stuck with that fucking that? It's that, so funny. Yeah, you know what I mean? My black co-workers, I'm like, I didn't know that was a word until they brought it up. And right, right. Mexican Jordans. And I'm like, what? How do we get stuck with that? You know, I was Yeah, asking. exactly. And they're like, because you always got someone steal rocking some knockoff Jordans. <laughs> you know, like, damn. I'm like, she's right. I was like, damn, it's because, you know, this is a little true. But, you know, I was like, damn, we just get stuck with that fucking that connotation and shit, but it was, um, I don't know, like, nowadays, too, how do you feel about the sneaker industry? Because, like, me and Chino were talking about it, too. I feel like nowadays it's kind of getting basic where, like, I don't know if you ever go to, like, sneaker events and stuff, too. It's literally nothing but ones and dunks. Like, it's no twos. There's no threes anymore. I mean, you get lucky if you get or, or four. I know fours are really are they're really, hard. really they're hard to cop pretty often. 
Yeah, no, but I feel like fours are like so ones, fours, and dunks are like the main three shoes that are like really hype and like that you see all the time nowadays. Like I haven't seen a pair of thirteens in a while or like a pair of seven oh well, pair of sixes, a pair of eights, you know what I mean? It's just I don't know. No, like you said, they'll, you'll get maybe like two colorways for those numbers if you're lucky in a year. You right, know? right, right, right. Mm-hmm. And me personally, I love fives. You know, fives. You say, my really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I can't. I have a pair. It's they're up in my attic, bro. Because I don't wear them for. Which at ones? All. The ones that they're you the, just copped the, right the, now? The, no, the aqua, the aqua, eight, the aqua, that yeah, the aqua fives, the ones that came out no. last year. Yeah, they look like the jaguar colorway, right? Yeah. Jaguar, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, I had them. I, I just, I just picked them up because you know I was walking and I was like, "Fuck it, let me just fucking get them. Why not?" And they were like my first pair of fives too. But no, I just can't. I just, I just like, I don't like them. Why I not? They're it... huh? they're yeah, they're comfortable. They're I just like, don't I like, like, the, I like the, the ankle support. I don't like the the lace thing. That the lace have. lock. Yeah. That's what makes it cool, bro. And then, and then, and then, and then, I'm not gonna lie. I just don't know how to tie the fives. That's it. Bro. Oh, I get I'm just you. trying to. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, nah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little like somebody that don't know how to tie fives. Nah. <laughs> Yo, it's so crazy because you start realizing that these sneakerheads tie their shoes a certain type of way. I'm like, mm-hmm. why don't my shoes look that, like that? And I sure enough, I YouTube it. The mm-hmm. right way to tie your ones, high ones. Right, right. Oh yeah, yeah, with the lace on the uh, sticking out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, you gotta make sure you have them like that, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so and so other than like your so what 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 shoes do you have other besides like the thirteens? Like what other retros do you have? Okay, so like um last year I picked up or like I feel like it was a bunch of last year. Um, I got the UNC um five blues. Nice. Um, um, um I bought them resale. I got the Raging Bulls of the fives because. Red's my favorite color. That's my favorite, my favorite pair of fives ever. The Raging Bulls or the Toros. Those are my yeah. I have a, I have a pair of those too. Those are really nice. The, um I was able to get the Toro Sixes. Again, I'm a big Ooh, fan of Ooh, those are nice too, yeah. Um I was like I was trying for the reimagined fours that just came out. Did not I hit. Got them. Uh, I got I didn't them. hit. I tried, bro. I hate that. I I tried so hard. I woke I, up early. I, I didn't was there try. The top, and I, I didn't hit. I didn't try. I just walked in at the random champs. I was like, you got a four on a nine. They're like, yeah, the last one. I was like, fuck. <laughs> I don't know. I, I can't do the reimagined ones because they're not the exact same as the originals. Like, I just like they mess the colors with the colors too much. Like, I know the originals have like the um, like the gray and like black speck um part you know what i mean and i just didn't like how they made it all black this time i was like nah that's that's not true bread like it has to have more they, it has they to have had more a gray to it they just have a little gray to it like how yeah. you were saying it yeah i noticed that it has it, to have more gray now now they're just like i get it they're black you know, breads black and red you know what i mean but still like i don't know i i couldn't get behind them i thought that that at least reimagined was cool because you saw the reimagined the blue and black ones that came out, mm-hmm. those were like ugly. You can still buy them, you know. They're still at the shelves. Wait, which one again? They're oh, the high okay. top ones. They were black and blue. Black and but blue. instead of it being like made of leather, they did like some like suede. cloth material. Yeah, suede material. Oh, he's talking about the royals, I think. Like the oh, the royal blue ones. The yeah, all suede. The... Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, like, okay. I think it's like new book or suede. I'm not sure. I don't think it's new book, but it's like some. It's like a suede. Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and like those. They're, they literally are still at you know I can go to the mall and pick them up. Right, exactly. Like I, I just sometimes I, I feel like, guys. Ah. <laughs> and that's because I went to the outlet, the Nike outlet, and I they, they, they were just there, and I was like, yeah. fuck it, why not? Uh, got them low, up. You know what I mean? Yeah, for the low, you know, why not? You know, but yeah, the coolest shoe I caught last year it was right at the end of the year. Um, I got the Powerpuff Girls, um, the Dunks. Oh, nice. which one? I got the blossoms. So That's the, the pink ones. The pink ones? Pink oh, one, yeah. Nice. I've seen the Wait. pink ones. Those are really nice. I, it wasn't my first choice. It's um the one that I was trying to go for were um was the it buttercups. The green? Yeah, I like the buttercups the most. The green, yeah. The green one. I I don't feel like I have a lot of green shoes. So I figured that was a green that I really liked. I'm like, oh cool, you know? But you... um you can't win every raffle and I won the buttercup one. So I'm like, hey, I'll take it. That yeah. is true, but they 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 only sold on um, sneakers the app or so I so 
one thing I found out last year is, and the reason I found this out was because I didn't get the Haritos. Oh, um, the Haritos are really nice. That though. was another one, too. A good one. To get a lot of these dunks, like, uh-huh. um, especially when they come out as SBs, you have to go to the skate shops. And these skate shops will do raffles. So there's one in Wicker called um, Upskate um, mm-hmm. Skate Shop, I think. And there's one on the south side, I think on Pulaski, called um, Uprising Skate Shop. They both there's, do raffles. There's an Uprise on Wicker. Uh, is, I think it's before you get to Wicker, but it's on Milwaukee. Okay, maybe I'm flipping the names. And it's Uprise there and Prosper in the other one or something like that. But yeah, okay. there's Uprising two skate shops to look up. Yeah, okay. Uprise is pretty dope. I've been there before. They always do so, raffles. It's so when it comes to SBs, you just go to the skate shops? Yeah, I feel like it's a lot better. Um, sometimes they don't go on the sneakers app. Uh-huh. So, like, um, I think I was trying to cop the Aprils, the April SBs. If you haven't seen it, it's like a turbo green, and it has, like, a, a silver swoosh. And I'm like, yo, I want these shoes. I want these shoes. And I was waiting on the sneaker app. I'm like, okay, where are they at? Where are they at? Where are they at? And it turns out it was a skate shop only shoe. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck? You know, like I was looking at dates, you know, the date changed. So I'm like, oh, cool. The date changed. I just got to be on the sneaker app on a different date. Nope. You have to go to the skate shops. I'm like, what? It would have been nice if someone would have told me, but you know, live and learn. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Not bad, what but... other sorry what are you gonna say no. what 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 other like do you guys do you have a holy grail on you like do you... i think right now the pop up girl is my holy grail um my other twos i think my unc fives you know people really like those when i bust them out uh-huh. um i also have um these low fives and the reason like i don't have too many lows but these low fives they're like black and they're suede with a little bit of pink on the bottom. They came out for like either Taiwan New Year's or like some kind of special New Year's. Mm-hmm. And it has like um, a cool like little um, Asian symbol in the back. And it has a little tag like the ones that the Force has. So it's the only time I've ever seen that like on a different um, shoe besides the Force. So it's kind of cool. I really like that shoe a lot. And I get a lot of compliments for that one. Like, no, yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna ask too. And the Holy Grails. Um, what other brands? Like, I know you said Adidas. What other brands would you say that like you go for? Like, me and Chino were talking about New Balance too. How their newer stuff is like coming out now. That's like actually pretty decent. Like before, we weren't really the biggest fans, but yeah, their six fifty line. I think that's super dope. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you know, I really like those red and white ones that came out, and it just so happened to be the same ones that Taylor Swift. You know blew up and everything but i'm like mm-hmm. yo even before she said it, i'm like yo those are dope shoes i like that right. silhouette. i like that colorway and sure enough you know like it took off I'm like yo it's dope so i i do like looking at different shoes i think adidas are dope i think like if you're looking for something like out there i think mischief you know that mm. like weird band they, they put out some cool shoes um they have like little tearaway shoes uh i don't like designer shoes though yeah you know, no I, no why yeah if, off white Jordans, cool. Off white shoes themselves, now. Nah. What about Balenciaga shoes? Like the, nah, like, no, nah, you shoes. wouldn't like boots, bro. The, the bottoms are too big. You wouldn't, you wouldn't wear, you wouldn't wear like those tennis shoes. Like look, they look like tennis shoes. Yeah, really? I, I don't know. Like for that, I would rather do like uh on the original like the Adidas. You know, uh, I forget what their shoes called, but you know they have like their tennis shoes. Is it the or, yeah, maybe it's the sambas. Yeah. Mm. Oh my god, don't get me with the sambas right now, bro. Those are those are nice, man. Those they're pretty decent. I, well, here's the thing: only because I play soccer and I only use them for soccer. I think it's a uh, soccer uh, shoe, but like mm. I I start I I noticed that a lot of people are now wearing them as like a style shoe and all. But I don't know. It's just it's just like my my soccer Mexican sub is like no, come on. <laughs> what are you gonna like, think of Reeboks? Sorry, what are you gonna say? It's like. What do you guys think when you buy basketball shoes? Would you wear them just to wear them, or would you buy nah. a basketball shoe just to just to hoop on them? Now, now yeah, now, buy, now, now I buy basketball shoes just to hoop on them. But like, they're specific like basketball shoes. Like, I'm not wearing any of these Jordans out to hoop, uh-huh. even though right, like exactly. I have been what they were made for. But like to me, these Jordans are like for fashion. Like, there's better, you know, jumping shoes and everything. 
Okay. Now, no, but I'm, like, is... but I'm just saying, like, let's say, like, for example, like, if you go to like a Foot Locker and you see like a LeBron James shoe, would you wear them just to wear it as a, a fashion, or or would you wear them to play ball in? I, I just wear it to play ball in. I don't okay. think they're like that fashionable. Okay. How about so, like a like, John, the, the 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 John Mort, or was it was it what's what? his name? Uh, the number twelve from the Memphis Grizzlies, John John Mort, John Morantz. Yeah. His shoe line. Uh, I I have to look at it because I don't know it off the top of my head. Uh, but like, hmm. I will go to a shoe line that I might get like some hate off of. But like, the Kobe's, I think the Kobe's are cool, like hooping shoes. But like, wearing shoes, I kind of think they look kind of ugly. Yeah, like especially Person. like the really the really high top ones. Like they're good for basketball for sure. I can like, get behind wearing some of the low top ones. So like, depends on the colorway, but yeah. Like, the Grinches were really popular and everything. And I thought, you know, cool, like, red and everything. Mm. But I'm like, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't think it was, like, the coolest silhouette I could wear. So that's how I felt. I will say, too, even nowadays, too, like, the new basketball shoes. Oh, look. But anyways, let me show you guys the, the shoes. Oh, dang. I didn't even look. know you could do that. Like, these right here. Like, these, would you, like, would you... well, they look like that. They look like that, like, overall. Like, would you wear these just to wear them or... Nah. Okay. The pink one was kind of cool because it was like the cool colorway, but I don't like, think those look so dope. Like I see, like, uh, like I, I see a lot of just people just trying to buy basketball shoes just to wear them. I just, I just question myself. Like, I don't know. Do you guys remember the KD era when people would wear the KDs with like the khakis, like the peanut butter and jellies, and like yeah, the... yeah. I, I remember I, the KDs. That, I remember that, bro. It was just so crazy to me. <laughs> but um. <laughs> What were you gonna say? No, wait, what was it? What is it like? Was it a KD four? No, or I think it was a five KD five peanut butter jelly, something like that. KD five, yeah, yeah. one shoe I thought was cool. No, oh no, that's a six, the two? Easter, the six, the sixes, yep, yeah, the KD sixes. Though, that's when everybody's wearing them for for fashion, those they, ones right yeah, there, yeah, yep. I think those are so ugly. The KD. I remember yeah, people just... wearing those with jeans, bro. That shit was crazy. Like even the, especially the flower ones right there too. Like if if I want to do like a cool shoe like this, you know, I'm a big fan of the the Pharrell Williams, mm. the Hue, the, the Human Race, they, yeah, yeah. And they have colorways like that. I think they do a better version of it, you know. Yeah, I love and you. like the the one uh, Booper shoe that I I always remember that I really like, uh, and this like way back. Um, I had some Carmelo Anthony's. I thought those were pretty cool. No, I was just going to say, too, like, going back to the basketball shoes, I just feel like nowadays the basketball shoes aren't good. Like, every single basketball shoe that I see, especially from Nike or anybody else, is all low tops. And, like, me being, like, you know, a little bit heavier set, I, I need the ankle support. Ankle support more than yeah. The, yeah, and, like, I, I guess, like, nowadays people don't think about that. So, like, I wouldn't. Personally, me today, I wouldn't buy any new basketball shoes because none of them are high tops anymore. And it's like, where's the support? Yeah, you get the cushion from your for your feet and stuff like that, but the most important part is your ankle. You know what I mean? And now it's just they <laughs> forgot all about it. They want y'all to break your ankles. I know, bro. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but what's what's you guys uh input on on reps on on shoe reps? Would you um, personally buy a, a shoe rep? No, just because I've seen so many people called out for it personally, like, and but but like, then here's here's a thing. Sorry yeah. to cut you off, but but as well, I was talking with Jordan too about this. Is like, how how would you like, like, would you really like look at a shoe and and like up like, you know, Expect tell the person yeah. take off your shoe, and let me see it, you know, like like how would one, you know, really. Nah, dude, I was, so I did a pop-up last week at Moline, Illinois, but fucking nowhere, west side, right? And some guy came in, and I, and of course, I'm looking at people's shoes, and comes in with these five off-whites, and I'm like, yo, your shoes look a little weird, man, and I'm looking <laughs> at them, and I'm like, yo, that tongue's too high, like, your shoes do not sit right on your foot, because they're not real shoes. And like, yo, you're wearing fake shoes, and you could tell, like, you could tell when the shoes are fake. Mm. Like, there's high quality reps out there, but yeah, you know, like, you can still tell most shoes. I personally think. And what did Buddy say? 
And he's like, I don't know, man. I just bought him off um, on Buddy. And I'm like, all right, cool, whatever, you know. But, you know, at least he didn't say that. At least he didn't try to say that they're real or everything. Like, mm-hmm. if you're going to rock raps or whatever, at least say that they're raps. Right, right. No, yeah, I, I personally just don't think so. It's you guys, that you, can you do. guys would would pay the overprice on a shoe then, like if you, if you wouldn't be able to buy it, you know, retail price. Yeah. Okay. Like the like, retail which, price. Which sucks because, like, you know, some shoes are justified, but like right now, if you go to some of these um like um sneaker shops, or whatever the resale shops, mm-hmm. you can go in and they'll have the pandas like at two twenty. Realistically, you just wait on wait on Nike app. You can still buy them for one twenty, or or like just go to Foot Locker because now yeah, they always have them. has it. Now they, they have, have them, them everywhere now. Yeah, now it's like a very demand shoe now. So <clears throat> yeah, I think we get one of the new staple shoes. I like their dunks. I wonder if they're trying to push their dunks so they get back off the Jordan. Mm. So you know, less probably. I can see that because it's, it's. I feel like dunks is it's a new thing now or modern yeah, modern yeah. Uh, popularity now. The um, the colorways go crazy. They're getting a bunch of collabs. Like, you know, I me personally, I'm like, yo, why doesn't Jordan have more collabs like this? But you know, Nike smart. You know, Nike has to pay Jordan for you know the Jordans. So if they could do it in their line, which is the dunks, they'll make more money. Yeah, yeah. But then again, it's like you have. Air Jordan and then you have Jordan brand, you feel me? So I, I feel like that's another two two things. And I feel like I feel like with Air Jordan it's like more of like the Nike and Jordan collab and the, the Jordan brand is like it's I feel like it's up to him now whether he yeah. wants to make that collab or not, you know. That is what it is, but yeah. um I like the dunks, you know, they they've done, you know, anime um crossings. Where we've had like the Gundams, I think that's cool. The Dunks coming out with Powerpuff Girls, I think that's cool. You know, I grew up watching Powerpuffs, so I really enjoy that shit. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? I'm trying to think of other collabs they have, but I don't know. I think Dunks really putting out like a lot of cool shoes right now. I I'm remember, of- uh, I think last year they were supposed to make a collab with the brand, uh, the clothing brand called Born Again, but that shoe never got released. I don't know why, but. But that that uh, looked like talking, a cool ass shoe though. I'm not sure y'all. You talking about the blue one? The, the blue, yeah, and it had like "Born Again" on the bottom, and it was like clear. Uh, I'll show you a picture. Sure, hold on. Born and raised, I think, right? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Born and raised, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, if you don't know why, it's because the guy died. Oh, for real? Oh, damn. Damn. Yeah. So that shoe was supposed to come out, and um, the um, he ended up giving up a bunch of shoes to like the school, or whatever. Uh-huh. And like the day after, I forgot how he passed away, but he literally passed out after doing like the school thing. So they never released his shoe. But like, I was kind of obsessed. Like, why wouldn't you release a shoe? More homage to the guy, you know? Right, right. Yeah, but, like a like a memory or whatever for him. Like to, like, like it was these though. Like these look nice. They're super nice. Like especially with the yeah, pink lace nice. right yep. there, like. Boss, it looks nice. That's a shoe right there. Like, like there you go, guys. Like, that was supposed to look nice, though. But damn. So like that person who wants you, if I could find like a good quality rap, I'd probably rock those. Just because it's bullshit that they didn't come out with you know an official launch, but yet there's a bunch of resellers with it. You know, like that's bullshit. Mm, interesting. I didn't know resellers had that. Yeah, because you know. It's so shitty hearing about the shoe market, but there's a lot of backdooring. And, yeah, you know, yeah. besides bots, which we already have a problem with, the backdooring community is like, you know, they're going directly to, you know, Nike distributors because they know people or whatever. And they don't even have to fight for this shit. They'll get like 200 pairs of that shit and that's done. And, you know, you hear stories where, oh, yeah, the head of marketing and sales son you know just got caught up with the warehouse of all these shoes and everything and you know because the resale game's real they're like why wouldn't they capitalize on that shit yeah so that's the shitty part about the resale market and the sneaker industry yeah i think the resale whole like resale industry has kind of made the sneaker industry um worse than what it is like now people can't find the shoes like back then most you have to do is like wait in line. You know what I mean? That's really all you had to do and you would get your fucking pair, you know? But now 
being online, being, you know, standing in line and waiting out the day or like, you know, trying to get a hit on the sneakers app is never a guarantee. But it's because, you know, with like the resale market, they literally created a stock market for shoes. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, when the shoe comes out, you know, you're buying it at 120. If it's going to go up to 20, you know, because they sell out because they do limited drops or whatever. Why wouldn't you buy a hundred pairs? You know, this has a better return than a stock does, you know, because some of these um, colorways or styles are guaranteed, you know, to go up, you know, especially with their retros, you know, granted there's some retros you can still buy right now, but you know, the colorways, if it's UNC, if it's bread, if it's taxi, you know, there's certain colorways that, you know, are always going to sell. So why wouldn't you want to, you know, marginalize your profits off right, this right. shoe? Hmm. For sure. <laughs> that makes sense. I feel like the only, I think one shoe I would go above and beyond would probably be uh, the Spider-Man ones. Yeah, those are nice. They're those nice. are dope. Those, I feel like I would go above and beyond for. I know it sounds super, like, uh, basic, but I, I would like to have the off-white ones. The the Chicago the, Bulls the, one, yeah. Okay, I I feel like also the the U UNC ones are also nice too. Yeah, UNC think, ones are always good. Both yeah. colorways you can't go wrong with, but I feel I'm big. You know, I'm big red. <laughs> no, nah, I don't know if you guys ever seen the bread ones, but those are probably like one of the like holy grails for me for ones. You know, oh, bread, bread ones for sure. You know, yeah. you see those shits, dope as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, one shoe that I really liked was the Oreos, and I think it was the Elevens mm. back in the day. And if I they ever come out with the same colorway again, that's an instant cop for me. You know. I know you said you're a big fan of fives. Have you ever seen the Oreo fives? I know they came no. like like a couple years ago. Those are fire, man, fire. Oh, I have nice. a I have a really old pair, but they're really beaten up. I I wish they would like come out with those again. It's like all black. The sole is white, and then the spikes are black. So it's, like, really basic. You can wear them with anything, you know what I mean? And then, of course, you got the icy bottom. So, like, it just goes perfect. That sounds clean as fuck, yeah. you know? I know this year they're coming out with uh, the black, um, all like, black um, fives in the, the summer, black I think. Cat. Mm, yeah, black yeah. Cat. That one's going to be nice, too. I'm going to have to try well, to get those for guy. sure. Um, I forgot what's another one pair that's coming out too. Oh, the reimagined threes, the the black ones. Yeah, yeah. Those are also another ones too. Ah, oh, that one. People hate on the threes because of the elephant print, but I honestly love the elephant print, bro. I feel like that's what makes Jordan Jordan is the elephant print. I I, I like know. the threes for the elephant print. Like, I, I personally don't have a pair of threes, but mm -hmm. I personally want to buy it just because, like, you know, that's staple shoe. I think right, it looks right. cool. I think the elephant print's cool. Yeah. Overall, I think it's a good shoe. It's just the way it, it's, it looks. It's not a high. It's not low. I think mm. it's just like the right right shape. <laughs> now, do you guys have an opinion on, like, the J Balvin shoes that have been coming out for, like, Jordan? I think they're I pretty dope. I haven't seen them. Let me, let me look them up real quick. Ugh. Look them up, but there's no colorway that, me personally, I felt like, oh, I need this shoe, you know? And I hate to say it, like, Travis Scott does have cool-ass shoes for, like, Nike. I what? hate what he's done to the resale game uh -huh. and, like, to the shoe game. Because as long as it says Travis Scott, it will sell. Right, right. But, you know, he does have cool shoes. But which Balvin three, uh, which Balvin shoes are you talking? The ones, the twos, or the threes? So, I feel like he has, like, two threes or whatever. But, like, yeah, those ones, like I this. Have this. This disgusting, like, bro. Like, like this one, I, I like this one and this three. Like, for sure, these the, these two. But like this one right here, that's yeah. no, that's a no go. I mean, I can do the cloudy twos, the, the cloud twos right here. First of all, I don't like twos. And what? I, just, I I think the twos are so ugly, dude. Oh and Jordan, to bro. me, this is classic, bro. I mean. <laughs> This colorway is all right because it has the like the baby blue and the white. You can on. I just don't like the material on the back. It makes it look puffy. Like I wish it was just like regular leather instead of that. Oh, right here. No, it's... no, like a little bit on top. Right to the left, to the left. Oh, like this this little thing. Yup, that right there. I just don't like that. It makes it look way too puffy, like a fucking like a puffer jacket or something. But 
my girl says that they look like Walmart shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, she's just hating on on my shoe game, bro. I got I got me the Lucky Green twos and the Chicago twos. Okay, those are dope. The Lucky yeah. Green twos are dope too. Lucky, yeah, Lucky Greens are always good. Um. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't know. I th- I think the the twos is is like a a, a snooze sh- retro that people I don't know. The, the, I feel like it's not a sleep on shoe, but it's, I think it's a decent collection to have to your collection. There there's been a certain couple colorways that came out that I'm like okay, I can see that, but like I feel like it's a little tough for me to be like, yeah, that's a two I want to cop. <laughs> uh, what about y- an eights? Y'all y'all fuck with the eights? That's what I was gonna mention right now too. I love eights. Like the Bugs Bunny eights are yes, one of my Bugs favorites. Bunny. Are the oh okay yeah I know what you're talking about yes. I like um, eights. The, the Aqua Phoenix. eights, the Phoenix eights. Uh, Phoenix are right. Aqua eights are really good. Um, I'm trying to think like of another the playoffs. Color. The playoff eights. I haven't seen those in a while. Let me see what they look like. They came out. Uh, I think last year, two years ago. No, last year. They're I like... have it. I feel like that that color is a little basic, but I, I see a lot of people with it. I would definitely wear the playoff eights for sure. I like the black and red, but like my overall favorite is probably just the Bugs Bunnies. Like those are the classic, man. Like you can't go wrong with those. Oh uh, yeah, I think that gray is super nice. I really like that Bugs Bunny for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, my buddy had one of those. Those are probably one of my favorite shoes. What about the Kobe Bryant ones? The eights, the the white with the purple and yellow ones. I haven't seen those. Let me see. Uh, I could wear those, but it's kind of hard to match that. Like, it's like very Lakers colors. Yeah, that's a thing. Though. <clears throat> that's cool. I I like white. I'm just a little dirty, so yeah, white's tough. But I the colorway is dope. Like, it's definitely a shoe that I have to like take on and then put off and then like clean pretty often. Probably. I mean, <laughs> what What's your input on on Fazos? On Faisal, was that? Uh, 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 Air Force, uh, Air Forces. Ah, uh, uh, I don't know. To me, they look a little bulky. I'm not a big fan of it. They're a little fat, mm-hmm. but like, there's like the Coco Air Forces. I think those look pretty dope. Um, I think there was like some wheat Air Forces. Those look pretty dope. Yeah. Um, uh, some of the OALD line, whatever they've been coming out with. Uh, they've been coming out with some cool shit. So, I don't know. I see like rappers like ASAP Rocky rock them a lot, saying that you know Air Force Ones and everything. But like, I don't know. I just I've yet to own a pair. So oh, you haven't owned a pair? No. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> That's not, my question was next was if you were to own a pair, but anything was like, what you think on the on the Black Air Forces? Because you, you know what they say about <laughs> yeah. the Black Air Forces. <laughs> stick them up. <laughs> stick them up. <laughs> stick them up. <laughs> <laughs> would, would yeah, you, I, would, I would you... fun, but they look like janitor shoes. I can see that. I can see that a little bit. Like like sketcher shoes, like for work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I see those black Air Forces. Like no one's wearing those for style. They look so ugly. And like when you see like like those old heads buy the Air Force ones and they're beating up and they're like they start to round out. Mm-hmm. I'm like yeah, they're definitely like super ugly. <laughs> Oh, but uh, do you have any questions for us, Primo, before we hand- wrap it up, my guy? No, nah, man. I think, you know, I had a great time talking with you guys. Um, Yeah, hopefully once I get this lineup and this funding down correct, I see you at my events, you know. Hell and this yeah. time, a lot different. I'm really trying to have a full smoke out, full, like, immersion, mm-hmm. you know. So I think that should be fun. Hell yeah, my guy. You should uh, keep us in touch with that. And we'll love to pop out, man, and uh, do some content as well. We do content on the side. So we're always down to do something. Definitely do yeah, some content. Sure. For I'll the... keep you in the loop, bro. Like any parties I hear right now, it's been like super dry. I'll let you guys know. But, you know, I know the industry would love to hear what you guys think about these parties. You know, obviously, I like to go to as many as possible. But, you know, just been waiting on the parties right now. Uh, for sure, my guy. But again, thank you for you know popping out in the podcast. 
Yeah, um, thanks for having me, bro. I had a great time talking with you guys, honestly. Oh, for sure. And I'm sure this is not going to be the last time that you'll be popping out in the pod. And I know that we we need to have a, a, a real, real pod with, with some smoke, smoke yeah, in this bitch, you know? For, for sure, we got to pop out, smoke out for real. I know my sisters, you know, my partner in my mm-hmm. cannabis company, our brand together, Primo. She wants to definitely, you know, like to talk. So hopefully we do that in the future. Yeah, for I'm sure, I'm all for supporting women in cannabis. All right, yeah, but um, other than that, Jordan, you got anything else to say, my guy? Mm, no, nah, I mean that's that's pretty much it. I don't know. I mean, I feel like it was a really good conversation. You know, what I mean, it's uh felt very nat, it's very natural. You know, what I mean, we we covered some good topics. You know, it was definitely a pleasure having you on. You know, what I mean, definitely, for sure. Um, yeah, I appreciate it. You know, again, I, I everything felt great, natural, and you know, again, lots of fun. We had lots of laughs, you know. I'm glad we got to, you know, talk about our cannabis, you know, experiences and shit. No, yeah, definitely next time, too. I want to ask you a little bit more about the anime and stuff, too, because I see you got the Funko Pops behind you and stuff, too, and the poster yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't like to start it off so often, but I got, like, my figure collection right there. Nice. Like, oh, okay, let's go. Yeah. But... <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how I feel about it. People say I should be happy about it, but I'm like, I don't know, man. You try to explain that to the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, that's money right there, bro. You resell that the is, bitches. That's money, man. bro. As long as it's not coming out the package. Uh, <laughs> you yeah. know? <laughs> but but that's, that's it, my ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you guys did enjoy today's podcast episode. As always, we won't see you guys until probably the next podcast episode or vlog. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to smoke and stay high. That's pretty much it. Till next time, guys. Yeah, stay blazing.